you know, to, so to start the this Counter Strike uh, podcast, uh, what do you guys think about the new mountaintop? What you're gonna ask me about a game I the, haven't played? To to you start. Know what? Okay, so you know I have some information. I have okay. some information. We can play the blame game now. I spoke to them. They told me they contacted you, and that they have tried to contact you. I mean, you told me they did not at all. Well, I wouldn't know. Wait, can I get an invite? <laughs> so you didn't get an invite either? I, I didn't even know about okay. this game. I've never See, heard of this. So, so who's this okay? Wait, with this information, okay. who's more right? No. <laughs> you should probably show, okay. show show the trailer on the stream. Shroud's sure, new game. Sure, 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 sure. This is this is Shroud's new game. game. Okay. Let me. Uh, where do I grab the drop it on the chat in here? Let me go full boomer mode. Black screen, real quick. Hold on. Am I? Uh, okay. Oh, you're good. I'm just going to pop up your stream, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just seeing which one he wants me to send in general here. Where'd you drop it? Did you drop Did it on the open chat? Drop it right here. Hold on. I got you. Now do it here. See where I pinged you? See how I did that? Magic. Oh, you did. Uh, so oh, yeah, developers from, they say, Respawn, Epic, Riot, Bungie. Uh, all those people left that company. To make this company. And they've been apparently working on it for three to four years. Yo, nice cam. Ah, oh, shit, wait. You, I can't show it on Discord, but yeah. Detour. I'm literally Detour. right in the no, middle of it. your stream. <laughs> That's all right. Here we go. This is scuffed. It's fine. But it just looks like Valorant 2.0 with Borderlands. I mean, I'm it's really not trying to... Borderlands meets... Was that Icebox? I just saw Icebox there. <laughs> probably, yeah. Probably was. Uh, probably so what's, was. What's probably the, was. What's what's the shtick with it? Uh oh, hide your screen. No, that's fine. What did you put? Oh, oh God. Um, <gasps> I don't know. I have heard that there are some private play tests this weekend. Must be nice. Uh, so I so now we can play some blame on uh, the marketing guy there, Stephen, who I've known for a very long time. He was at Blizzard for quite a while. He is there now. So. Steven, if you're listening, if you're not, you did not invite Steel or Flom. They are blaming you. Um, you blame them. I can put the blame on your, both of your agencies if you want to go that way. Uh, no, nah, Sam does good work. He wouldn't fuck it up. They didn't send okay, it. Okay, so it's Flom's fault. Okay, Flom what didn't the read fuck? the emails. Uh, <laughs> that is why you're not in the play test. Uh, Steel getting ignored. It's very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. Ignored. A legend should be in these play tests, okay? True, yeah, absolutely. So because there's no invites, is the chance of this succeeding closer to zero or a hundred? I mean, I'd say low. <laughs> does this, does Shroud it being Shroud's game mean anything? Does that matter, do you think? Mm, I mean, no, I don't think so. Not that much. I think it'll help, but I think one streamer doesn't make a game. like Bro, if it, have you seen Final Mouse? What about it? A one streamer makes a uh, an entire collection of yeah. Like, hold on, one second. Like, ah, what do you mean? Oh, sorry, is that your sponsor? My bad. Is it? I don't know. I'm pulling up the stream <laughs> to see what's up. He's he's going in the back for something. Oh God, he's actually whipping something out. Does he have the Tarek, the shroud, the scream, the? No, 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 no. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Doggo, I, I told Slash earlier somebody was leaving the house and I knew the doggo was going nuts. So, no, doggo, um, okay, no promo placement. No, but I mean, it's just you're trying to sell a video game experience that people are going to consistently play versus a product is what you just compared it to, which is pretty shit. Like, streamers can sell merch. That's literally what you just said. And I, streamers don't sell games. Not the way, not the way, like, you would want it's it to, to be like, if you want it to be hard. Valorant. Yeah, yeah, for a month. But what happens after that month when everybody plays it? They got their money. <laughs> they don't care. Well, I know. So what is a well, successful no, game, right? For that kind no, of game. Like, for a multiplayer game, getting their money would need to be a ton of money. And for really the company to succeed, it needs to be like actually a a game that's played often so they can use the microtransactions to really make money. Um, okay, what's, so just, what's, just submit the 15 second trailer. Are either of you interested? What's, what's the bit. goal? I'd play it for like a week or a month, maybe, after I'm done playing some okay. CS. 
I'd try it, but what's the end goal with it? Is it meant to be an esport? Is it meant to be just a competitive, fun shooter game? Is it supposed to be fill with some sort of thing? niche that's not there? Is that not the same? From what I, I really don't know a ton. From what I understand, they were in development before Valorant launched, so they were just really late. It wasn't like they. I don't believe that they were. They were probably doing the same things that Riot were doing, and they looked at Counter Strike and looked at tactical shooters owning and then made a game now riot because of things people like volcano were just so far ahead of getting a something somewhere out the door um that they were first to market and valorant's been doing pretty well but now that this is their take on things i mean i don't know how much has changed internally or maybe it even looked even more like valorant and then they're like okay we can't we have to make the art style at least distinct. It's not going to look like Counter-Strike, but like I don't know what the game mode is, but I'm going to assume it's planting a bomb. I cannot imagine it's anything different than planting a bomb or diffusing yeah, a bomb. Yeah, but do they call do they call the bomb <laughs> something different, like a spike or like a package? <laughs> There's no details. There's no information. Uh... All we had was the teaser, and I know that there is a private playtest um, this weekend and that we probably will... Soon. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he paused for a second. But no, I just, I mean, I think like a game like that, they're looking for people to play more than just a month. If they go, if they don't charge people up front, they're going to go free to play, which means like micro like transactions. You want people playing for a longer period of time. I just don't know. You're, you're definitely not going after Counter Strike with that art style, like immediately, right? Like, and with the abilities. Yeah, I feel like, in, unless. So Unless you're going for uh, something with like a mechanical stuff, right? If if the whole purpose is the premise is give a game with really good shooting mechanics, really good movement mechanics, um, sort of like Quake. It doesn't have realistic graphics or whatever like Counter Strike, so it's not going to appeal to a certain audience in in that regard. It's going to appeal to hardcore aimer gamers or something like that. But I I don't know kind of like where they're going for because like. Shroud and Sacriel are pretty hardcore in whatever genres they played, right? Sacriel with what, PUBG yeah. and the other like uh, battle royales, and then Shroud with all the FPS games he played. So probably going for that angle. Uh, I cannot outside, imagine. I guess, do it, people care? Yeah, I don't know. This game is going after Counter Strike and Valorant, even without playing it or knowing any information. Just looking at it and just hearing about like what it's described as. It seems like that is the plan. Now that seems like a very short-sighted plan because of just how big, you know, Valorant has filled a hole which Counter Strike was never able to, which is a bunch of Zoomers. Valorant started e dating. Thanks, Valorant, doing doing great. <laughs> they started. Um, <laughs> it really brought e dating to the mainstream through video games. It's a whole world that Counter Strike has never been able to uh, to to puncture. You know, Battle Royale kind of had similar issues. Um, where, you know, you had Fortnite and you had PUBG. Apex actually did a really good job of Sacral, being the third game. Sacral isn't involved in this. That's a different Daisy type game. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this? no, no. The Shroud and Sacral's game, this is not his game. This is a game that he has invested in. Yeah, that's what I like. I believe so. That's yeah, a yeah. big caveat, okay? That's a big it, difference. That's a... Uh, that was good info to know going into this entire discussion. Oh, okay. so, but his tweet is, been working on this game for a long time. So it's also ambiguous, because the game that he announced that he was working on with Sacriel is, uh, I believe, like a DayZ type of thing. That but makes then a the, lot more sense. The way okay. that he made the tweet for this makes it also seem like he was working on it, but I believe he just was the investor, not in terms of the in terms of changing of the gameplay, but maybe he has, maybe he had, he has had a influence on the actual. Well, he probably, gameplay, which we don't yeah, know he what probably did. No, I mean, he probably has like influence over. It. I just, once again, I don't think one streamer is like enough to, you, you can't just be like, all right, we got shroud. We have a successful game. Like, I just don't think that's going to happen. Even like, even if he was making it himself, like they just take, there's a lot of things that go into it from the trailer. I just don't think, at least from 15 seconds, so I'm jumping the gun here, but you're you're making me talk about it. So I would just say it's not really distinguishing itself in any way, right? Like immediately it just kind of looks like Valorant 2.0 to me with just some Borderlands styling. And, you know, you talked about like what Valorant filled the whole... Valorant made it a more approachable Counter-Strike with a ladder system that works better. And that's, that is 
what it is. And then over time, I feel like now, the longer that Valorant has been out, because this is the nature of all hero shooters, the power creep, like the amount of things that are going on in Valorant, I feel like I feel like now people don't even see Counter Strike and Valorant as like necessarily a one to one. At least I don't. Like I, I, I would never be like, oh, I want to play attack FPS and like Valorant pops into my head. I'd rather like it, I just feel like it's its own thing now where it's kind of distinguished itself. You either like it or you don't, but I feel like they're going to go down that same exact path, which really how much more are you going to capture? You know, Josh was mentioning yeah. like, you know, mechanical zoomers and like people that, but like even that, that's such a small market. You know, you can look at like games like Diabotical and other, nobody like wants to really play Quake that I feel like is younger. Like th those types of games, I don't think really reward or yeah, are enticing to people markets. right now. Yeah. So I, I don't. Yeah, but I don't, attack shooter has proven to be a mass market. I wouldn't call it attack genre. shooter. I well, unless okay. I see something just because no, it has they, a bomb. They, they, like, no, they, they've called it. They've called it attack shooter within their in their like uh, internal. I mean, that's fine. How many, how many attack shooter. shooters are there besides Counter Strike, Val, COD, and like Rainbow Six? Though it's not comes a attack like, shooter. I mean, I don't disagree necessarily, but if there's like a bomb plant mode and it's like a 4v4, 5v5, then... The, the speed of the game does not make COD attack shooter. Okay, so what I was asking, is there room for a true third attack shooter? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's why I'm like, so I just have my doubts. Not you playing on the downfall, two, two but... Is the max, two is the max. There's, there's no optimization of there's, the genre there's... that could be done. Here, Here's the angle that I see. Valorant. There already is a third too. The game, as well. When you, oh, okay. Well, GG. Uh, fourth, <laughs> whatever. It doesn't matter. When you're talking about uh, Valorant's uh, balancing issues, yes, it's it is true. You see agents that are never played because they're so shit. You see um, other agents are so insanely strong that they're always picked and they have to get nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. And when you start adding more agents and there's so many more synergies and stuff like that. There's going to be all sorts of balance issues um, continuously, especially until they put a limit on how many agents they're putting in. But I'm pretty sure it's like three or four agents per year that they're sending out. So like once every three or four months or so. And when it comes to Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike, because of Valorant, they had to do stuff. They had to change the UI. They had to change the buy menu. They had to change some quality of life things, some UI elements to make it more easy to, you know, get involved in the game to play the game, pick it up for new players, but also just quality of life stuff, like being able to sell things if people accidentally drop too many guns because they're idiots and uh, <laughs> be able to pick up guns that are dropped across the, you know, the spawn point. Um, so those things wouldn't have been brought into CS if Valorant didn't have those things where you could just request a gun and drop it to, the, you know, buy it directly into their um, into inventory. And the thing, though, is Valorant's going to have their balance issues. It's always going to be a thing. Counter-Strike's always going to have its whatever the fuck uh, um, issues with the performance of the game, just randomly just getting stuck on walls when you're trying to jump <laughs> up, random bugs, random FPS drops to like 100 for no reason at all, um, uh, p potential issues with uh, the cheating or anti-cheat not being strong enough, the ladder system, like nobody uses the in-game ladder system, everyone's using Face It or whatever other alternative there is. So there's definitely issues and faults with both the existing main titles that if... If they do it right, if you bring in the mechanics and the tactics of Counter-Strike with good like quality of life UI elements and then also a clear vision of what the actual goal of the game is. Is it supposed to be an eSport or is it supposed to be just something really fun that people can run around and, and pub with and have a really good time? There is potential for it to find a space to carve out and then if they get the foot in the door, then there's potential. The, does about, like, does Rainbow yeah. Six not show that there is a legitimate third option if you if the gameplay has a distinct difference, such as breakable walls and all these other, um, you know, items? Of, I, like the way that Rainbow Six works is vastly different than Counter Strike. And yeah, Valorant, but it is still considered a tactical. No, it, it is shooter. a tactic. No, for sure, it absolutely but is. It, it, it's have offshoot. It? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Okay. My only issue with Rainbow well, Six ever has just been I never felt like I got like uh, enough feedback when I got kills. Like I know that sounds really surface level, but like when you had a strong game in Rainbow Six, it didn't feel nearly as rewarding as other games that I've played. So I just like I didn't want to like deep dive into it because it didn't feel rewarding when I learned certain aspects of the game. And it felt like I would have had to have like really 
like the amount of effort to learn Rainbow Six, like especially when it comes to like their maps and stuff like that and how you move around in Rainbow Six. I didn't want to take that plunge uh, just because of the initial feeling of like when I had strong games, it didn't really feel like I was having strong games. So, but I still like recognize that that, that game is insane, like for completely different reasons, which I would say it kind of goes back to my point earlier. I just feel like there's three already and it rainbow six is completely distinct from Valor and CS. Uh, I mean, and that game with this 15 second trailer I, to me feels like it's overlapping a lot. I, when I look at rainbow six, I didn't play it much. I played it with Kusta when I was on ghost, like what, six years ago or something. Uh, yeah. I felt like that game was uh, akin to Dota versus league or something. It was very difficult to get into learning. The maps was a challenge because there's so many different levels and learning like every floor, learning all the weird spawn points where you could break something open and kill people as there's like running up all this wall spams, knowing how to use the, the drones to get through all the different traps of all the different agents. Like this agent can like blow a hole through this wall, but not if it's fort fortified, but if someone fortified, it you can use this other agent that can break the fortification wall it's like what the hell is going on and then half the agents <laughs> are locked as well so there's a huge learning curve i think that puts people off in part what you're talking about with you know the feedback of getting kills yeah you it's a very high skill ceiling thing in the in the um, sense that you don't get a lot of feedback and you need to learn the game and be a complete nerd about it but then also it's there is so much stuff to learn. Like when I go and play Dota and I, if I loaded Dota up for the first time and I'm seeing like a hundred plus heroes or, you know, whatever, like 150, whatever they're at, I'd be screwed. But because I started and I played on and off, like every couple of years, I have an understanding of what the heroes are and what the goal is and kind of like the, the um, overlying thing. But if I was trying to get into Dota, I would probably start with league. Like league would seem so much easier to get into because it's like, kind of sub, some of the stuff is spoon fed rainbow six it's not spoon fed to you 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 have to go and literally like grind youtube videos to learn specific things and take it yeah. day by day map by map and if something that's easier to entry would be way more appetizing i think that's why rainbow six doesn't have as big of an audience like how the yeah, it's true and that's why counter-strike uh, on the flip side has a huge audience of people that don't play the game that will watch it Compared to Valorant, compared to League, compared to Dota, yeah. like all these games. Same thing with Rocket League. I don't play it. I've played it before, but like I could show it to like uh, my parents that are in their seventies, and they'll know. Like, okay, car kicks ball. It's soccer with cars. Like, it's easy to follow. <laughs> car you know? kick ball. Right, Counter Strike. It's red versus blue. It's easy to follow. They, if they watch the Valorant game though, and it's like purple smoke versus other smoke versus. Like there's a wall now, this is green, this is green with a little bit of red hue, and like this thing just like started flying. Like what how, what? <laughs> Somebody's you know? lasers coming out of fingers and shit and just yeah. people are dying. Like this guy's got a bow and arrow that shoots laser beams. Like what's going on here? <laughs> they wouldn't yeah, know what's no, going it's, on. It's pretty yeah. wild. But I'm done talking I mean, about that one, Slasher. Get me out of this one. I don't it was fifteen seconds on that trailer. <laughs> I like well, the no, overall I mean, one. <laughs> it's okay. I guess we'll we'll probably see. Yeah, I just think we could talk all day about TAC FPSs. I just, that game, we just kind of got to wait and see a little bit more information on what's actually in it before I go too far down the rabbit hole. Because Josh was getting me revved up and then I realized that I wasn't even going to be talking about that game anymore. No, like you weren't wrong in anything you were saying. I was just like, we were just going to start, we were going to derail entirely. I think I think we'll have it pretty soon. I mean, I think actually just responding real quick to everything Josh said, I think it is pretty, like you are right on the money except that even though Rainbow Six is not able to break through to the mainstream, it being different enough from Counter-Strike and Valorant gives it its own unique community at the same time, which is how it has thrived as, like, the third game in of the mix. Which came out, like, five years before yeah. Valorant came out. Yeah, it's, it also had a very long head start, yeah. too. It, it was the second game for a long time. It really, you know, Valorant has skipped over Rainbow Six in terms of popularity and all that. And in part, they carved out like a lot of Counter Strike's, you know, entire fan base, and they appealed to a whole different audience of people. Like you look at the demographics of CS versus Valorant, and you'll see way more guys playing CS, whereas Valorant's more like fifty-fifty. And I think a part of that is all the agents and 
you know, people that don't even necessarily play the game, but cosplay or, you know, the him, her duos or whatever the fuck's going on in that game and the <laughs> e-dating that you pointed out earlier. Like all of these things are uh, part of the kind of culture of it. And you, you don't get that in Counter-Strike. You get like this yeah. older European, like... Nobody's barking for guns. <laughs> Nobody's barking for guns in Counter Strike. That is what you're trying to say. There's no, in somebody you, going, "Can I get a drop?" And they say, "Bark for me." Yes. Hey, I didn't say it was better. I did not say it was better. I just said it's not barking. Okay. That <laughs> no, you get you get your your uh, sexism and transphobia and Valorant. You get your racism and homophobia in Counter Strike. It's very yeah. You got to collect them all. Very distinct types of slurs that you get between each one. There is some crossover, you know, just like both games, you do get crossovers oh, on the slurs in your games. Um, but you know, they have two distinct audiences in, of hatred, which I think is very cool. You know, embrace your <laughs> embrace yourselves. Unique. So clip it's that part. Important. Just just slash your thing. It's all very cool. Thank you. <laughs> oh shit. Um. So they're okay. Actually, talking about. Counter Strike, man. We could actually talk about this game. Uh, next topic is Counter Strike better than Valorant, or is Valorant better than Counter Strike? No, I'm just kidding. This is the topic you bring up when I you ask me to come on. Cool. I'm just kidding. No, I just What's made a tweet. I, I just made a tweet, and that's how what I ask. Because I know that is going to be a forever. That's the best question you could ever ask someone. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm, he's just uh, simply farming. Is Valorant better? And those people will argue in your mentions for hours and hours and hours. Hours. And try days. Like, literally days. Or ever. <laughs> I love to troll in Tarek's chat. It's actually my favorite uh, thing to do just to rile up. Tarek likes to troll his chat. He has, it, he has it the worst. <laughs> he has it definitely the worst. It's very funny. So what's next um, for so us? So actually, the actual game, it, they included this uh, self cap boost, um, which is the most recent update. And now that I, you know, I talked to both of you, I haven't really been paying attention to this. Was it Snap Tap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. S situation. So okay, first in terms of like the boost in the game, I saw that. Uh, is, this ad? Trend... is this an ad? This is an ad. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sponsored, but I do have the keyboard that has that function. I just don't have signups installed, so I. He literally uh, has the chair from them it. too. God damn it! He's. This, actually, we have a yeah, plan. We have a fucking plan and, in here, bro. And, uh, <laughs> Dude, oh my god, we can't I, have this. I got is... everything. Oh well, I'm sponsored by Steel Series. This is perfect. All right. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, I got, yeah, I got. I got the Steel Series headset. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, okay. We're we're twinsies, but I mean, I've already ranted a lot about this, so I guess I'll go first. I think it's bad. I think it's just bad. And like the philosophy, the idea behind it is bad. The idea that you Snap took tap, not the self boost, just to be clear. Sorry. Yeah. yeah you did ask two questions. Snap tap specifically. That's what I'm going to focus on for now. Uh, I don't like the idea that basically you're just adding a script into drivers, into software, firmware, whatever you want to say. Like you're essentially adding a script that is in the game where previously people would either one frown upon it or two, if I asked an admin at least once upon a time, I have not done this because I don't know anybody that was using these. You know, if you were tried to use null binds, which is essentially the same thing, you do not need a razor keyboard to do snap tap. Nobody needs any like specific piece of hardware to be able to achieve what they're achieving on these keyboards. It is a script that you can make and put into your own game without any of these special keyboards and just run it. And like, I just don't like the idea that you're putting a script into the game, one that we previously just didn't use, and people, like like I said, was banned. I don't know if that's actually the case right now. Um, and you're just taking away a major component of the skill ceiling in the game or a skill gap, whatever, however you want to present it. I don't think that, like, it's not even that... I think it's like OP. I just don't like the idea of what it's doing. I don't like the idea that a company is like, hey, we just took a script and we put it into our stuff. And by the way, now you can have zero human error with this mechanic inside the game. And that feels really bad. And I also feel like if you're going to do that, and I've seen people say like, oh, well, PC performance hurts. But they're, they're not changing mechanics of the game. They're not removing mechanics of the game. Sure, do I see somebody faster? Does my game run smoother? Is that an advantage? Yeah, absolutely. But you're not removing a mechanic of the game. You're just having your game run incredibly well and smoother. 
And then just to kind of wrap it up, like if people really are so dead set on keeping it, that's fine. I don't want it to be pay to win. I don't want it to be locked behind hardware. I don't want people playing the game, not knowing what they're facing. Then Valve should step in and remove counter strafing from the game and actually make it just built into the game. Not counter strafing, but uh, you could like have the null binds built in very similar to Valorant's movement. If you're going to let people use this anyway, you're now giving people a competitive advantage if they spend money. And then also, you can't buy null binds either, which is also a pretty can, big... Though. It's quite the caveat. I feel like that doesn't make any sense. I think they, you can. Why? What is the difference? Okay, so I want somebody to explain to me why banning a null bind is acceptable, but if I put it in a keyboard, it's okay. No, but it's not, though. From Razor's, uh, from Faceit's announcement two days ago, both the null bind configs and the snap tap are both allowed so from face it okay yes. okay okay i wonder i actually am curious no if it works for my league matches in, in face it is that they run different rule sets has it, has it always is that just for ranked is is when is like i previously pro? asked like d sub tick my movement at one point uh when i asked it, they basically said don't do it we don't really have a clear definitive answer and then i just didn't end up using it so i won't lie i didn't follow up but that was kind of where that ended. So, and I don't this know many two days ago. This well, no, I saw. Ago. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm saying okay. like from previously I think before. These are two separate I issues as well. Like the, there, there's a lot of overlap. Yeah, but also it's like brand new game where people are like, this is unoptimized and feels like shit, and we're getting inconsistent results. And yeah. here's like, uh, here's like a way that we can kind of, uh, you know, hot fix this for now until Valve decides to fix it or whatever. And I could understand that like still scripting shouldn't be allowed uh with regards to any sort of software input that is predicting what your next key is going to be based on like the last key press or whatever or any sort of macro in that regard i feel like that shouldn't be allowed um any sort of hardware that allows you to have better inputs but it's you actually making those inputs yeah. so lower input delay or whatever latency if they want to change the actuation points and all that stuff i think that's cool but once you involve software into the mix i think that's probably crossing the line because everything should be um user input and then you can make the the case about like what about mice that have these um features that kind of make the line straighter or whatever i, I know that it, this used to be a thing back in the day i don't know angle kind of snapping you're talking of, about right yeah, angle snapping stuff like that yeah, yeah about like keeping it keeping it straight and some people liked it and some people didn't and you could change how uh, what degree of it um it could do i could it's still like you having to move the mouse it's just uh you know it, it doesn't really change that much i think compared to it but i i think if the software is literally trying to predict what your what your next move is going to be based on like the last key press or something i think that's probably not okay for a competitive game if you want to use it in pubs and stuff i think cool whatever go for it but i don't think it should be allowed for uh, the actual esport so on uh razor's profile page when it when they're selling the uh at least the huntsman um it says approved by valve so it well, at least not has unapproved by Valve. Yeah, that's kind no, of what but, I uh, <laughs> like. What does that actually not, mean? Is this the well, Valve it, seal okay, of approval? I would, <laughs> I would okay. I would have to assume Razor, as a professional company and who's been around for a long time, would not have put that there if they did not ask beforehand. I mean, look, I could yeah. be completely wrong, but you would. I would assume they only put Valve's logo on their website because. Yeah. Uh, I'd also a, assume they wouldn't do that to begin with. There's a distinct difference, though, in what we're actually the, having a conversation it. about. We're having sure. a, we're it, it's hugely distinct, right? It's fair game for Valve. It's not considered cheating. It's a it's software in the keyboard that allows you to like press these buttons a little bit quicker, and it affects everything from typing to gaming to whatever. And it's it's not cheating by any means, but well, should it be competitively? Should competitively, it should it be allowed competitively? Yeah. Do I think it's cheating? I don't think it's necessarily cheating, but I don't think it should be necessarily allowed for a competitive. Okay. Oh, wait, but he, this, now, this is a big thing. It, it can't be one or the other. That's part of why they've changed Counter Strike, you know, to. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Right, you know, I get what you mean, Josh, but I. 
Yeah, they cannot separate the normal everyday player and the professional community. That's why we have That's why they made their changes <laughs> so much. Yeah, the sub tick changes, the rounds play changes that they've made. Everything is to kind of unite the community between whatever the, a normal person. All right, fuck it, ban it for everyone then. Yeah, that's why, or give but it to everyone, or build it into the game. That's what I. That's what I was saying. Is like if you're not gonna get rid of it, or like say you can't use it, then it shouldn't be locked behind. Like for the casual person, one, you shouldn't have to load up a config for null binds to make it work if you don't want to use a keyboard. That's shitty. Wait, wait, right. wait. Okay, what? if we're gonna bring up configs and stuff. Like I've said this before, if you want to play CS, it's like you're playing on you're like a hacker on Linux or something like that. Like you don't not get anymore, to just load though. up the game. Not any. I mean, to it's a degree, that's the it's point. Better. That's, it's, it's, it's better. Only since Valorant's come out, Valorant everything's in the game. It's saved to your profile. True. You can go anywhere. You never have to change shit. In Counter Strike, the I had to find a new folder because CS2 and CS2 <laughs> was different. There's like three different config files I have to change. Like, it, it is a completely different thing. So uh, I forgot what the original point was. But, uh, I mean, you already have to kind of be some, like, super nerd hacker oh, guy yeah, to but be like, able to it, figure this out. Anyways. That shouldn't be the goal, though. Like, that, uh, like, I get what you're saying, but that still shouldn't be the goal. And I can tell you, like, I'm privileged enough to have this. Like, I know that's not what they want. I've talked to them about stuff like this. Like, when we were doing, that's why the jump, like, throws exist inside the game. Like, when we were playtesting, they made it specifically for us to try stuff. And then... Like, that's where we, like, then then eventually it just gets built into the game. I know they don't want people to have to go into their configs. So if you're going to make it accessible for everybody to just have perfect frame-by-frame -frame counter strafing with no human error whatsoever, it should be allowed for everyone and not just, like, either through a config where, like you said, you got to be a Linux hacker over there, hacker men's, moving, going through seven different configs. And then also it shouldn't, it shouldn't be... The only way you know how to get it is by giving a company money that like what that's just like that even like so even if it's gonna get allowed i just don't see how that the way that it's currently being allowed should exist either like i don't like either i, I don't know both outcomes feel really bad we've this similar issue happened within the fighting game community as someone in chat mentioned with the hitboxes which are a new type of stick and it was considered the community reaction was very similar or even more so than here. And everyone thought that people that use those hitboxes were cheating. And I believe all of the community backlash made the manufacturer change the way that the sticks work. Well, um, can I hop in here real quick? So. Yeah, you have a prime Absolutely example of that. Absolutely not. It's, it's your podcast. You need to not <laughs> yeah, talk. No, no, no. But I just throw, I hate interrupting, but I do it sometimes. Bad habit. Uh, the Wooting clearly did that. Like, new. Wooting released a version of it that had human error built into it. I guarantee you they knew, how, like, they released, as soon as Razor did it, then they updated it and then made it so that there's no potential chance for human error. So, I mean, people, both, like, both these companies that currently now have it, I would say Razor really opened the floodgates and Wooting yeah, understood. Razor's leading the charge. Yeah, yeah, but Wooting knew what they had. And I guarantee you Razor did too, is my point. And it, it was a choice. And that's what makes it feel even worse when you're talking about like, you know, this company wouldn't just put approved on by Valve. I mean, I know they're a company at the end of the day that wants to sell stuff, but it just feels really. Wait. wait. Yeah. I like the way that you're framing that is almost as if Razor was tr like intentionally trying to build cheats in game or something. That's not the the goal was let's make something in uh, with the keyboard that makes the um, product responsiveness unique. so much higher that when you do these advanced movements in this game, it's very responsive and you can get like the, the absolute most out of it. Like. It's not like, hey, we want to do it to give people that buy our product an unfair advantage. Like, obviously, they want to sell the product, uh, and the feature that that is uh, allows you to take your movement to the max. But the problem is, it's not people's <laughs> movements; it's the software that's making the people move better. Right? I mean, I mean that's yeah. The price of it. I so I any, mean, any but you can't tell me the gaming company didn't know what they were doing though, like or what they were creating. Like, I get what you're saying, and that's like a very glass half full take of it, and I. I don't even think you're like wrong. I'm sure when they are doing this, they're like, this is cool. Like this, is, nobody's sitting there like, 
you know, all this is, but also at the same time, this is why community feedback is important. One, they probably do on the back end that like they were going to get backlash, but at the end of the day, they're trying to make money, their company all good. Don't care. But like, surely they knew what like what Pandora's box they're about to open. And I just feel like, I don't know. It just feels kind of shitty overall to me. So is this, maybe is I'm this just something boomer. that the community really should get behind to try to get Valve to. Eliminate. Oh, yeah. Well, OK, I don't care if they. OK, I do. Selfishly, I do not want it to exist in the game. I think it's bad. But regardless, I think and this will never happen more than likely because it's Valve. But yeah, I do think Valve should say something in terms of stuff like this, where is it allowed? Is it not allowed? Like what? what what's the. Are we counter strafing still or not? Like, do I need to learn this or do I just need to buy something and call it a day? Um, and that that's what, how I feel about it. Because right now, them being silent what? is just weird as hell. Can, wait, can I might be un, misinterpreting what the actual keyboard does. Can you, do you know, like, can you explain in your own words what SnapTap does? You can never have two inputs at the same time, so it eliminates the human error of a counter strafe. So if you release the input, think of like Valorant when you re- it's literally just like Valorant. When you release the your strafe, it's gonna stop Im- immediately. Like so, you and you can't fuck it up. Like it's gonna stop on the perfect frame. If that makes sense. So there's no there's, there's no human aspect. A. There's no fucking up so, a counter strafe. So so if I'm if I'm holding A and then I wanna. I want to stop. Normally, I'd have to lift all the way off of A and then tap D to stop. Just and let now, go. What do I have to do? Just let go. Now you just let go of A and then it it does the D for you. Yeah, it gives you the D. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Says it's not true. Okay, so which part am I missing? I'll, I'll reach out for a second. So, you don't let go. It, you just press D. Sorry, I actually explained it poorly. So you, sorry, 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 sorry. This is this is good. This is good because I haven't used it yet. A, and then you hit D, it removes the A press. Okay, so yeah, it, yeah. What, so the last movement you do, so what, my understanding of it was, let's say I'm holding A, and then I, you, go to, um, you. I go to press D, and then I want to like go back and press A again. It's like I don't have to come all the way off the D. So I kind of got there, but I, I was like adding an extra No, no, I explained it poorly. You're, you're oh, okay. So, so you're, strafing, you're strafing left, you're holding A, and then as soon as like you come off of the A and you, you press, as, you, as soon as you press D, it cancels out the... Yes. Yes, and uh, then you're done. You've officially you press the D yeah. and it stops the A. Yeah. So all you have to do is like just give give it a little tap. What happens if you're still holding A and you let go of D at that point? You're still holding A and you let go of D. That's so actually I'm holding a good question. A, I actually don't I, know. I, I think I it tap stops D, it. but I'm still holding A. A was nullified already. That it goes back to A. So I need to tap Maybe D nothing, and also come probably off nothing. A. So, play so it gives a little bit of a buffer kind of thing. It goes back to A. So D. Once I press D, it activates D, it deactivates A, but if I let go of D, it's, it goes back to whatever's previously activated. Fuck me, this so, is why I had the video, but yeah. The, 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 I will say you should watch the Optimum video and not hear it from me, because when he shows it, you'll basically see him every... Si- you can always achieve it once you get used to the mechanic of snap tap, because like what you're saying and what you're, I think you're getting to is like snap tap will have its like own way of doing it, but... Once you get used to doing it and what he showed in his video, which I'll just have Sicko play in this. Sicko, add the video post after this. But yeah, you can just always perfect frame counter strafe. So you can't fuck it up. But it would, te- I mean, I guess maybe you're learning like a different skill, I guess. So what what's the difference between what Wooting's keyboard does and what um, snap the SnapTap feature Nothing does? anymore. Nothing. They're the same now. Wooting, so Wooting, both software based. W- Wooting updated after raised. So Wooting had their own original version, and I didn't use that version either. So I can't like walk you through it. But once again, in that same video that I'm referencing, he showed you where the human error could basically come into play, and how it like had like this give where you could still mess up. Like you can, it made it a lot easier to hit good counter strafes in it. But there was like the human element where the Razor version basically makes it. So once you get used to how the snap tap works it just removed the human element out of it entirely like in terms of the mistake and then wooting now to my understanding updated it to basically be the same it might work a little bit differently but i know they updated Mm -mm. oh the old wooting you could release the key still okay that makes a little bit more sense ah okay 
Yeah. So I need but, to, I need to figure out like, is there some sort of like philosophical foundation basis thing for, let's say, let's compare it with other things that came out. So, you know, we switched from ball mice to optical to whatever the fuck sensors mm -hmm. we have now. Um, we went from these CRTs into these 60 Hertz LCDs with 30 MS response time until these, you know, 240 Hertz or 360 Hertz monitors with one MS response time is that sort of, um, evolution of other hardware, um, on the same kind of realm of this, or is it different and why it's not affecting a mechanic of the game? Like it's not actually getting like, it's not changing it. Seeing somebody faster, having your mouse respond quicker is not to me, to me at least. And this is where I, I like, you're, you're still aiming. Can I aim better? I get what you're saying. Like, can I aim better because my mouse has a better sensor in it? Like, yeah, but also I'm not like removing the mechanic, I guess, if that makes sense. I just have a better tool for the job. And I, I, I could see maybe the logic that you're saying, this is now going to just be a better tool for the job. But if that were the case, then this should just be baked into the game kind of back to my original like what i was saying is like if this is gonna be allowed i don't want it to be through razor i don't want it to be through looting i don't yeah, want it I to agree. be through I, I want valve to just add it then because now we're playing different versions of the game it feels like we're doing different things oh did somebody just hit a sick counter strafe or did his keyboard do it i don't know like was that was that really good movement from him in this in this like gunfight did nico like run up ramp and hit some really sick shots or does he, you know, whiff the top hut guy from heaven? Like, I don't, it just, I feel like it, it creates like this layer of, uh, like it's just ambiguous and I don't know. I don't know like what somebody's doing. Like if I'm watching it, that's what makes counter-strike so much fun. Like when somebody hits an insane shot, I know they hit the insane shot. It, it kind of takes away a little bit of that for me at least. So, so the philosophical foundation is about your input as a human, what you're actually inputting through your mouse, through your keyboard is the crux of the argument. And that every movement that you make on this, every action you do in the game is one-to-one -one with the movement that you do on the thing, uh, like on your input yeah. devices, keyboard, mouse, controller in some cases. And it shouldn't have anything to do with any sort of software um, Okay. Well, uh, let me think. Assistance, in, which is what the, it is. In it's in software new, assistance. In the new Street Fighter, in Street Fighter 6, there are now one button supers, which has become you... a very hot button issue within fighting games because they removed the mechanical ability to do many supers within Street Fighter. And a lot of people had problems with just hitting one button to do um, special moves. But from what I understand, and at least watching the top players, that has not greatly impacted. The, the highest level of competitive street fighter. I've, I've got a CS analogy. Can we work with that one instead? Yeah, yeah sure. I like that. Yeah, yeah. You remember back in the day in CS Source specifically, the B hopping, people would like take apart their mouse to remove the thing on their, their mouse wheel. So instead of it having the notches, they could literally like free spin it. So if they wanted to B hop places, they literally just like took their mouse and just like. Yes. Yeah swipe down once and it just like they would just be hop perfectly they would never miss an input on the frame or the tick for that b hop Is yeah but they didn't sell mechanical it mechanical thing <laughs> they didn't sell no, no, it no, but but <laughs> what do you think that would be allowed uh or, no because well, should, it, that be, should that have been allowed it's like hard for me to get where you're going just because like they also just completely shat on bunny hopping so it's like in my head it's like i'm trying to remove that aspect out of my head for this analogy, uh, should that be allowed? It's I user mean, input. It's yeah, not changing the software. It's hardware. They're just making that the squirrel wheel can go infinitely. And uh, this it, man had to go to source and talking about removing the m mouse wheel. And I, I don't know. Logitech did sell those. Wait, did Logitech actually sell those mice specifically? They had the uh, notches removed with a button. They started selling Damn. Feature. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I just feel like that's not quite the greatest analogy for this. I know what you're saying. Like, I'm picking up what you're putting down, but I feel like that's a stretch. Like, I and, the fa and, and I feel like the fact that you had to go all the way there to there, like, yeah, I feel like that's a bit, I feel like we're, we've got a little far. The reason I go there is because I want to find out specifically what is it at its core that shouldn't be allowed 
so that you can have consistency, right? Because that's all that matters. Right? Yeah, we, yeah. we don't want to pick and choose and say, this one's okay, but that one's not. So at its core, what's different? So if Logitech's press, you press a button and you can just free scroll wheel so you can get perfect bunny hops because yeah. the, the input of the mouse wheel down, um, as soon as you're allowed to do it, will hit it. But that's not software. That's literally just spinning that wheel. Is that okay, yes or no, and why? Because having some sort of uh well we all deemed probably no right because yeah. we removed b hopping essentially with with z block well, and all we, that stuff so i'm just saying like well, z blocking yeah so so in a well, way was, like we got there they, they removed b hopping because they thought b hopping shouldn't be part of competitive play not be no, even yeah, if yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah. it with like no, normally, even if you space bar b hop that's just that, i it can't just like, it's, it's hard in this analogy where i'm just like well we got rid of it so like kind of yeah like i think immediately people make the difference and can like differentiate in certain situations i think i think Does if you're getting like software assistance it just shouldn't be allowed like i just i feel like that's how i feel okay i think the issue for flom just from hearing about it is that because it is Counter strafing is an advanced, I would say, skill. Maybe it shouldn't be considered an advanced skill within a game like. Well, it's something you develop, so right? Or to the game, but because your ability to be good at counter strafing is pretty involved in terms of how good you are as a well. No, it is. If you can't counter strafe, you suck. Like that's yeah. It it will be. There is a good amount of alignment between how good you are at that and how good you you can become as a player. And because the closeness of that relationship that i think is what makes it difficult but i feel like street fighter again is a decent example when it when one button supers were announced most of the community went crazy including professional players how this is going to ruin street fighter and ruin the franchise and ruin the game and it's been about a year and a half since and i from the outside as someone who does not play the game i do not hear about it ever it, I, it's never a thing that really comes up in terms of like why Punk won Evo or why people are winning tournaments. I don't um, think it's going to ruin Counter Strike like, though. I it's still the I... meta and whatnot, which is what is dictating who is winning. What if it really just does not have a huge impact overall? What if we do see pros using it? But well, it, they already it, do. They there there's pros already using it. They won Pro League using it, but. I, okay, has there been any big example? Like, have you seen any games where you could point out that that is what happened? Like, hey, can you could you see a fight and be like, okay, he, you know, he's no, using no binds or no, and that's and that's, but that's not really been my, I, I, I really like, I don't think Nico needs Snap Tap. I think if he used it, it might make him like, you know. 0.1% better or something like that. My issue still like comes back to just like, it's just a core mechanic of the game that's being manipulated. And I just don't know if it should be paywalled or it just shouldn't be this thing wait, that's wait. like lost in the sauce. Like it should just be definitive. Like, can it be you there or not? Like, yeah. But when you're saying like it's, it's paywalled, it's like saying someone that's on some fucking shitty $20 mouse or something. And then like, I'm on, you know, however much this Viper V3 with eight yeah, yeah. polling wireless shit is. <laughs> it's like, it, am I really using a paywall thing because I'm, I'm using like an expensive mouse versus no, that's no, some but $20 if, like thing at Best Buy. It just shouldn't be a mechanic of the game. It shouldn't be like changed and like not allowed for people to like, Oh man, how do I rephrase this? I just, a little I better? don't, I don't think like the the paywall thing should well, be. Well, no, okay, take the pay, yeah. Argument. All right, we'll take the paywall it, part out. That's fair. We just, we just need to come back to like, is, it should it be a hundred percent user input? But then, what if they find other innovative ways to to make the user input so much, you know, uh, better at being able to counter strafe and, and it's completely hardware related. So I want to make yeah. sure that whatever whatever consensus people come to, because the more we talk about this, the more I actually go in the favor of like Snapchat, eh, Snapchat maybe it's maybe it should be allowed. But so, if it is allowed, I know, just want it to be in the game. Like I just don't want it to be like this thing that you have to like get a config or a keyboard for. That's really what like I'm yeah, not I, I think so I'm not too. dead if set against it the like keyboard, then just put it directly inside of the game. Exactly. If Valve's going to approve like, the keyboard and what it does, then you may as well just allow everybody to. It just feels weird Wait, that so some people are doing... allowed in pro play. 
if if the well if the, the keyboard if, is but i to my knowledge at least for a while i always assumed no buttons were not allowed but that was that was an face assumption as, so this screenshot says face it allows both the no binds and oh, careful the keyboard. so so just careful face it rules are different from pro rules so i don't know i was just seeing if you put it over here but yeah no, 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 like, I believe, like, you probably are fine on Face It, but I think even the way he phrased it in there, is this it right here at the top? Let's see, yeah, I think it's, like, right here. I think, like, the way he phrased it, it made it seem like it was, so they're both currently allowed on Face It, although I'd recommend holding off purchasing a keyboard in case this changes. So that was what was, like, specifically put in there. And I mean, if people are going out and buying keyboards because of this, I mean, props to fucking Razer. Honestly. Dude, no, they're like back ordered like three or four months. That's like, Amazing. I'm not even. Like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so not that's, surprising. Yeah, no, well, I'm I not will saying sell mine yeah. right now. <laughs> 10 grand, highest bidder. I will sell my <laughs> Snap Tap Act. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I just, I, I would, I prefer it not in the game. But if it is going to be, it should be for everyone. Like that, it's as simple as that. Like if everybody, I don't want it. I don't want some people counter strafing one way. Some people can't like, I just want it to be universal. So that way when I like see somebody do something, like I can appreciate what they're doing one way or another. I, I, my own feeling is I'd rather just have more raw input from the actual human and not have software assistance and stuff added in. But if that is the case where the community is like, you know what? I think it's fine. All right, all good. Just can we put it in the game and just call it a day? That's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, so less controversial, uh, the, the new boosting changes within the game. Are you too good with that? Oh, you just mean the box? There aren't boosting yeah, I mean, changes. At least on Dust 2. We're I, talking I, about I just Dust 2, the box to jump on Cat, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Just Cat. Just the Cat. Uh, I'm fine with it. It's, I mean, it, it does change the map a little bit. I think it, it creates options for both teams. Like, uh, you can use it in, in the clutches now. It's CTs, if you're kind of cut off from long, now you can kind of get back up onto side or quad and stabilize a little bit better. That's going to be interesting in retakes and post plants a little bit. Um, and then it eliminates the issue about puggers just not listening to you when you're asking for a fast <laughs> 10. They don't know how to like boost you properly, and then it just saves you from getting a stroke when you're hitting your mid-40s. So I think I think overall it's I got pros and cons. That was a huge reason, I, motivating reason I, for why it's there. Yeah, it just like it, it just extends the life of CS players just like <laughs> by them not, you know, dropping dead earlier in life. I, yeah. I think... I think there's slightly more pros than cons for it. I'm I'm fine with it because I can see all the positives and uh yeah. No, I think yeah, way. it's not really all too dramatic. I think it's good. I I don't think it really takes away from like I don't need I'm not dead set on having to have my teammate boost me every round and like Josh said, you know, your majority of people are playing in environments where they're interacting with people they don't know and just asking for something that you might feel is simple but communication and listening skills are incredibly difficult. So yeah, I think like it removes a lot of, uh, you know, pain. Well, <laughs> try to get like fast cat, but also I think the mid round could be cool. I think just like seeing, you know, what players can do mid round post plans, how they reposition, maybe just like some overall CT diversity and setup. So I think that might also play a small part is I, I just think that, Dust 2 has been figured out for a minute and there isn't too much innovation going on. And I'm not expecting a single or two boxes or whatever it is to change the map, but it does give you a lot more freedom as a CT to maneuver around the map. So maybe we just get to see some stuff we haven't seen before. I mean, Adren did his video saying that this is removed from a bunch of different places on maps. Oh, um, you're talking about like him. Double... Sorry, go ahead. Just boosting in general. Well, it's broken right now. That's why. That's why. That, that's kind of like so. Boosting is kind of still glitched, and you might get on someone's head, and you're still, oh. yeah, you're still bobbing up and down and inaccurate, and you die. And so and I you think don't, what you don't, <laughs> you don't know until like you're just like, yo, boost me suicide for mid pick. Oh, I got the glitch. Yep, can't can't actually participate anymore. Can't do this anymore. So may, he could be right. Maybe they're removing more. I, I don't think they're actually doing it for that reason. Because if they did, there there's a lot more common 
Two. Well, actually, that one's pretty insane, I guess, like insanely common. I'm just trying to think of like Vertigo, for example. You have like the railing boost that always gets messed up. Uh, trying to, what's another? Yeah, Dust 2 and Mid, like you mentioned. But I, I don't think they're really... I just think they need to fix that, the boost bug still. I don't think they're making map changes based on that bug. I just think they can't fix it, if I'm being honest. Uh, it is an annoying ass bug. I still don't know how it's in the game. Pretty bad. It's it's brutal. And it's one of those things where it's like if you're playing a match, it's almost better to during the freeze time or not the freeze time, the warm up time of the game for everyone to just like boost on other people's heads and just figure out who's fucked or not so that you, you don't have to discover it in the middle of like a crucial round. You just already know like, oh, we got a hero. OK, OK, like I got the boost bug. When have you guessed like the AK? Yeah. Um, uh, because it's, it's just it is ridiculous but you know i i was here when csgo came out and i remember all the oh man the issues that that game had for yep. ages and ages and ages and people people do look at the game through rose tinted glasses where they think like holy shit because like the end product uh, you know in 2023 looked actually pretty good but like looking at the 10 11 years before that it came from some pretty whack ass um, yeah. changes and i think cs2 like for as many faults as it does have i think there's a lot of things that it does well and i think there's a lot of things that uh, are getting fixed as well that have been shit um i think back to when the game first released and how like the smokes kind of uh, the volumetric smokes were acting in certain maps or um, the the drip smokes that, that people used to do and how inconsistent they were. Like, things are getting fixed. Sure, maybe not, you know, on normal times. It's still on Valve times, but I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. But there are a few glaringly obvious uh, issues with some elements of gameplay, for example, boosting or getting uh clipped when you're trying to like jump up places yep. like that famous anubis jumping into heaven clip oh, and that God. happens on other maps but that's like a, a cs like, i remember csgo had horrible clipping issues for yeah. so long on so many like train you would just be like running across one of the trains you just get stuck randomly like it's not like it it's uh, a cs2 specific bug it's like it's just a cs thing yeah and that's i do think like it's like you're you, you nailed it i mean I think what it really makes it painful right now, specifically for CS2, is just that it's just repeat bugs, right? Like, it's not, like, I think some people are always going to be ridiculous in terms of, like, their expectations of how the game should be instantly. Uh, Don't listen we, to Loba. We also get the caveat, no, me, me and Josh, for example, and Slasher, you know, if you played CSGO early days, you have a direct comparison to how bad it can be. So, like, that, that it kind of skews our perspective, I guess, in two ways. Like, one, it makes us more patient. Two, we, well, and not in a few ways. Like, two, you, you know it's going to get better, or at least I trust them a little bit because of where CSGO got to. But that also, it can maybe, like, warp our perception a bit, too. Just, like, I, tr I sometimes try to think, like, if this were not Counter Strike and it were like another game, would I still be playing it if it had like repeat bugs and stuff like that? Would I be so like patient with it? I guess if that makes sense. And just the biggest pain is, yeah, like clipping and boosting. And it seems kind of small, like when you just like isolate and think about them. But it's just the fact that they're one, they consistently happen. You're probably going to experience it. If you play Counter Strike a few hours a day, you're going to experience at least one of those bugs once or twice. And that might not be a huge deal, but it just feels awful. And then you kind of combine that with the feeling of the game right now, where the way I describe CS2 is like, it's like you left your private server running too long and you haven't restarted it in like a month. It just, Counter-Strike 2 just kind of feels a little off. And then you throw in like, I, I, step, I stub my toe on a Lego running out of somewhere and get clipped. It just feels awful. Like you just get really frustrated and... I can, in the back of my mind, be like, you know what? It's not that bad because I've played worse shit. But maybe I shouldn't be like that, I guess. But it's hard. It's hard because I really enjoy the game. I think CS2 has like, been really... I really enjoy so many aspects of like the actual gameplay choices that they've made. But it's undeniably the way the game feels right now is just off. And, it, and the, the repeat bugs only enhance that feeling and make it feel worse. And they're a constant reminder of that feeling. I, mean, I don't I'm think definitely... any of those. I don't think any of those bugs are necessarily like game breaking though. Like they feel horrible in the moment, especially when it happens to you, uh, either clipping or or the boost bug. But 
you know, if if you were to weigh it versus the other game breaking bugs, like would you much rather have like you would randomly get stuck on a Lego somewhere or would you rather your game just randomly crashes because you're playing Inferno or like, well, I we did have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like I would much rather the Inferno just randomly crashing your game shit to yeah. be fixed over you know, a clipping issue or boosting issue. And I think back to like when I played Valorant, there was like all sorts of game breaking bugs. Like you could throw your pistol to a cypher camera and you can be on a camera shooting yeah, that's people right. in the head. I forgot like, about that. And, you know, that shit doesn't get fixed for a few days or a week. That, that shit strategy. actually it, it that breaks in the, the that is a, a game breaking bug. And that like <laughs> That uh, is something that absolutely it. fucks gameplay. And there's all sorts of other things where you could do uh, there was like flying happening and um, others weird um, interactions that happen and, and it would happen constantly. They'd have to like either disable the map for the week until they could fix it or disable the agent until they could fix it. Or uh, there's all sorts of issues that, that were coming from that uh, type of stuff. And I, I don't know. I, I feel like when it comes to is this actually game breaking or not it sucks it needs to get fixed but you know i mean really look the issue is grow up is it, what you're trying to say grow up no i'm not saying grow <laughs> up i'm just saying like this is this is like the epitome of a cs experience it's like it's it's so fucking good it's so much better than everything else yes. but it still has those little imperfections and little flaws that make you just want to smash the fuck out of your entire setup and be like how the <clears> fuck <throat> did you not fix this yet valve it's yep. because the requirements and the expectations are, have always been so high um you know and because also this is kind of, i think they're they get less leeway from going from source to go than they do from going to go to two because maybe they sh maybe they, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, because you know how bad Go was on launch compared to how it took them many. It took them maybe three <clears throat> years for it really to be like a good game. I think even longer, Between, honestly. But yeah, yeah, maybe maybe four years, maybe four years. So if the, you really want to go about it on that level, fucked. then two is off to a much better start than Go was going from source. But should so, that be the metric? That's kind of yeah, what I, I, yeah, I don't know. I agree. I agree because it's Valve and because it's Counter Strike you really in a lot of ways you shouldn't give them that leeway because they're one of the biggest companies in the world and the game has been around forever and you would think that they would be able to fix this but also if you really understand valve then it all makes sense because this is one of the most unique the companies in terms of developing games and how that there's no like true counter-strike team it's whoever wants to work on counter-strike ah that's not entirely true no it's okay. not true they, they sure, do have a cs true. team they do but yes you they, are they right do. they they do swap around but no i could yeah they they do have a it, cs it's team not, it's very it, small it, they don't have the team like valorant does which is like oh, hell hundreds, no. and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of employees dedicated <laughs> to the title at all times it's not I think how, valorant has more devs than all the game devs combined at valve i'm pretty sure so. yeah yes valorant has more devs than total devs at valve as a company probably more than double or i think it was over a thousand or something from the last time I, I checked so in terms of you looking at it like that then like valve is doing um an okay job. I would even say, like, look at what happened today. Uh, after Blizzard put out a manifesto about Overwatch 2 because even now they do not know, like, what they're doing. They cannot make a decision. <laughs> and any decision that they make has so much pushback that they question themselves and then write a four or five page essay, which they did today, about how they had they had to go through an entire backstory of how one hero limit got into play and <laughs> why they had to put roll queue in the game and then why they had to put 5v5 in overwatch 2 and now yeah, they're, but they're unionized back to cv6 huh? <laughs> no that's the wow team yeah, another unionized that's just the wow team that's true so like if if the look at what look at the blizzard devs are doing for overwatch they are confused they're frustrated they're having to like relitigate and explain the entire history of, in context of the game for the community and they re, I still at the end of the blog they're like we're gonna try out some stuff for 66 but we might not use it anyway so even yeah. they don't know what the fuck they're doing <laughs> so in terms of you're comparing it to other major game developers Valve was actually still doing a pretty good job and okay all, but and anybody all compared to blizzard activision is going to be doing a good job they're still okay yeah i mean we, we can meme and laugh about all the dumb th crazy things that activision blizzard has handled but they are a gigantic ass company um they're the biggest competitors to what a valve are and so are riot 
So if Riot and and Blizzard are handling their properties even worse than Valve are, maybe Valve should get a little bit more leeway considering the small amount of developer time that they have and because CF2 really did kind of just come out. What has it been, a year, year and a half or so? I'm secretly on your side. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I, uh, but I got to be Obviously, careful. Obviously, people want changes. Obviously, yeah, people yeah, yeah. want changes, and there's a professional circuit, and the, and the pros deserve to be playing a better game. Um, you know, there's so much missing from Go in terms of, like, community maps and community servers or, like, surfing or danger zone or what or whatever there's a tons of things that are missing obviously yeah from cs2 from go that they still need to implement i just don't think it was ever realistic to expect all of that stuff to be here and even in terms of the, the game stability when it comes to things like clipping and boosting and and shit that almost feels like i kind of expected that too even though it should be smoother at this point it should be yeah i wish it was it's not, but it's also not, it's not as bad. It's, it's a classic internet. It's not as bad as people want it to like make it out to be, but it's still bad. Like it, it, it just, it gets a little over the top sometimes, but that doesn't make what they're saying wrong. It's just like, yeah, it can be a bit much sometimes, especially like you said, when you compare it to other studios as well, it's not necessarily like they're so off the mark, but Quite frankly, I don't care. Slasher, fix the clipping and fix the goddamn boosting because if I jump into Anubis Heaven one more time and I hit my head, I will lose my fucking mind. All right. That's okay, great. When this goes on YouTube, <laughs> I'm sending the clip to the CS account. I'm sure you will too. I'm sure they're going to get right on it and definitely Perfect. not ignore both of us. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Definitely won't ignore both of us. All right, let's talk about some actual esports in this game. Ah, um, Valorant, my topic. Let's go. <laughs> wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> No, I mean, look, VCT EU isn't even going to win champions. Don't worry. We don't got to talk about any of that stuff. Um, so a couple like new developments, um, two things that are related um, and kind of not related, but they are if you're a smart person. Uh, EWC just finished for Counter-Strike uh, at Saudi Arabia. I can say, at least for myself and Flom, neither of us have watched any of it. And I have been very outspoken about EWC in the last couple of weeks and, you know, the Saudi involvement. And I know that Flam here did not even co-stream. And I can say as someone who's, you know, um, doing some report on everyone that's been taking the co-stream um, stuff lately, that a bag is being thrown around. A gigantic bag is being thrown to everyone and anyone. And Flam here has some stand-up morals. Wait, Eric, not... next time they offer you, can you, like, hook me up with that contact? <laughs> <laughs> they did offer me, but it didn't go. I didn't get I didn't get an offer for co-streaming because we didn't make it that far. They uh, they only sent me an offer for the, like, the opening intro. ceremony. The opening ceremony, which, I mean, yeah. It was a very interesting conversation. Uh, it, it was basically like, this is a large sum of money. Would you like it to watch the opening ceremony? And I was kind of like, Mm, no thank you and then the follow-up was is it like would you like more uh that was kind of the and then i just i'm not i don't know i don't really want to i know slasher is trying to you know hype me up a little bit i really don't want to hype it up because i was i actually planned on watching uh the world like i planned on watching it the na games that's what i wanted to do because the games are still it, so early that you did anyway do you, do you co-stream and compete in all the esl events yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So what's what, what's different? I no, think there isn't. Too, actually. That's, I that's think why. Well, I think so for me, this is the reason why I didn't want to co-stream it is just because they did offer me <laughs> like, honestly, like for me, I wanted to watch the NA games and wake up when I normally wake up because I wasn't I don't know if you saw the format, Josh, but the format was dick. So it was opening no, BO3s. I HLTV fantasy and, and that's it. So it was opening BO3s, a limb elimination game BO1s. So it, 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 the, it <laughs> there was a lot of things if you look oh, at yeah, it. No, I saw that because Complexity just like they went and played a BO1 and they were out. Yeah, yeah it, I remember. Okay, so yeah. it was like really scuffed and like, I don't know, man. Like what somebody's like, hey, do you want to like, you know, be involved? Or we're going to just because you're right. It's like to me, I'm just like ESL face it. It's all the like it's all the same, but it kind of feels it just felt weird. Like as soon as I got an offer for it. And obviously I have like Mythic League, so I'm paid from face it all the time. I'm like partner. Like it doesn't. 
like that. I know Slasher was uh, trying to hype me up over here. So, uh, but I'm proud so I, of you. Okay? Face it. I, I can, face it. Part of EFG. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I think it's different. I, I think it's different, okay. and, and and we we could talk about that in a bit. But no, I am proud of Flom. Like I can say that I know of many streamers who got high five figures, even low six figures per stream per stream including the opening ceremony and then afterwards because they agreed on the opening ceremony um got even a bigger contract than that so the bag is significant enough that yeah i'm gonna applaud you even if you end up taking it later you know it is <laughs> it's okay for right now it is good who knows man maybe it there'll be good. a number but no i just it, so like once i had the offer i was just like that's kind of weird um no, but I did actually plan on watching the NA games. That was what I wanted to do. Couldn't even do that because Complexity got knocked out so quick and then M80 lost him. So M80 knocks out Cole and then M80 immediately loses right after. Perfect. It's a lake. And it was all BO1s. Like, I, I don't... It's... It won overtime. Yeah, but it went overtime. So it was like a CSGO yeah, was, BO1. Yeah, great. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. But yeah, we love those too when we had MR15. Uh, no, I mean, honestly, if you want to talk about the World Cup, how do you spend that amount of money and who the fuck came up with that format? Like, how do you actually do? <laughs> they, they, they got all this money. They're doing all this stuff. The production was bad. Every time I watched a clip from the event, the audio sounded like it was hollow, but it's ESL. So I don't understand what happened there. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, they didn't even change the overlay. They changed the logo at the very top. And that was the only difference. But the audio was worse. The production was worse. The format was bad. And yeah, just after after the offer, I, I felt weird. But the NA teams are knocked out, and I didn't want to wake up at 4 in the morning to watch the games. I'll do it for Blast, but I'm just more interested. I think the format's going to be more fun. I like the teams more involved. Hopefully, complexity doesn't make me sad there, but they probably will. Um, no, so, we, yeah. They will, and we, we will get them to in just a second. I will say, though, Josh, I see them as different because I was talking with Richard about this on his show um, last week. And even Richard, who has been more hardline than me and outspoken about um, how he's against anything to do with Saudi Arabia's uh, influence and and partnership with, you know, esports happening, even he considers IEM and ESL to be different. Obviously... EFG is 100% owned um, by the same PIF that is putting on the Saudi PIF that is putting on EWC. But because of the history, this is the, this is for me too, personally speaking, because of the history of ESL and IEM and that it contextually has been running for so long um, independently, I still feel differently about it. Additionally, EWC is run, it, it is its own tournament itself run by Saudi Arabia. Of course, EFG owned by it, it's all kind of, it really is all the same thing. But I think that there is still a distinct difference because of the history and knowledge there and because EWC is its own tournament. Um, and whoever the audio guy is, there's a distinct difference. Whoever the audio yeah, guy is for yeah, one sure. versus the other, there's a distinct difference. That's that. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people could say no, but I do think that working an IEM event is still different than working an EWC event, either as a talent or as a co-streamer or anything. Yeah. I mean, the line is very blurred, and it's there's honestly not a ton of difference at this point, but I feel that it is enough. Do you feel like personally. someone that would say no to a, a EWC event or any event uh, based in Saudi to do uh, an event in ES, like an ESL event, like do you think it goes uh, one way more than another way? Like, it goes the one way more than the other. Uh, can you explain one so, way? Sorry, let's say. Um, let me say. Let me think. If so, if you're doing an ESL event. And then you're um, saying like, oh, I'm not going to do uh, EWC or uh, event based in Saudi. Is that, um, hang on, let me think about what I was actually starting to say at the beginning, because it doesn't make sense now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, I think doing like I, I am classic. Dallas or I am Katowice or I am Cologne or all those events with, oh, especially a rich history involved in it is definitely different than hosting the EWC World Championships. 
Um, although the, the overlap, at least for people like talent, seems to be directly the same. So it's not like they're, they're true difference. Anyway. I just, I just think, I just, I'm surprised it just wasn't better. Like, I'm not even trying, like, that's, like, I genuinely was not interested in it. Like, I'm not trying to, like, I know some people are like, you know, we could we could do the Saudi thing and get, and do the whole fucking circle jerk and and talk about that all day, but the, to me like the event wasn't good. Like I don't know, I I don't know. And, and these are two different issues, right? Like I the know, event that's cannot like, be good because like the production was shit or yeah. like the format was shit or the sound guy or whatever was shit. I didn't watch it, so I don't know specifically yeah, what you're yeah. talking about. But that's that's not what the the but core it's not issue even a is. World the core Cup. issue is it, it's the ethics of yeah, sure. But like I mean. Well, that's well, the so other, I'm just okay, saying we're doing topic. all this stuff, but like we didn't no, even so, talk. Okay, like great. the event was just not fucking good. Like what? Great, it's so. a World Cup with no world teams, with a bad format, with bad production, and what agree. the fuck? Like I fully agree. <laughs> so the other big news this week um, was that the officially the Olympics esports have been announced and will take place next year. Um, the contract was given to the Saudi Arabia government to run the esports Olympics for the next 12 years. So um, although from my sources and other people's sources, shooters will not be allowed, especially Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is like the worst potential uh, game in that way for <laughs> why it will not be allowed in the Olympics. No shooter game will be allowed, but Counter-Strike Counter -Strike and Call of Duty are definitely out. But Valorant, if you out. take off the bodies and then you take <laughs> off the blood, <laughs> is and from what I from what I understand attackers no from what I understand Valorant <laughs> is not even being remotely considered either okay um no so Valorant is not even considered I think what I game is going to be allowed there are uh, there is no mountain deal yet for Black any mountain game. whatever it's called yeah the new yeah true the new game the 15 second trailer they're in this is it all right, no, it's not. Uh, right. I, I can tell in your face. They were going to try for every game that was at EWC that is not a shooter. So they are going to try. They've already have early discussions for League of Legends, for Rocket League, for Street Fighter, for Tekken. Um, and then they are definitely going to include sports simulators like 2K and racing games and, um, you know, FIFA. You know, it's not called FIFA anymore. And then a bunch of mobile shit that they had last year, like the turbo tennis stuff or golf online Bunch mobile golf, island video mobile games, golf or whatever Fighter. mortal kombat finish him mortal kombat will not be in there no, i have a feeling we're not getting yeah, i don't know mortal kombat. it's i um, mean the event so itself like or sorry yeah go ahead counter strike will not get the olympics but the question that i uh, want to bring up is I believe it is, you know, c considering that the uh, national teams for Counter-Strike and for most esports are no longer there. We have so many international teams and um, like that's the current way that to build a, a the best roster is not to have five people from the same country, more or less. I mean, I guess some of the Brazilian teams still probably they do it the most out of any um, device and friends. Uh, yeah, device uh, and friends. Region. Yeah, maybe the Danes too. Maybe the, the Danes and the Brazilians are the two countries that still kind of keep the national team <clears throat> aspect together. But because we've lost so much of that, and that is what traditionally built up esports, you know, full American teams, full Swedish teams, full Finnish teams, um, etc. I think more than ever, a World Cup, Nations Cup event for Counter Stripe for Counter-Strike makes sense. And it would it would be actually very successful now. There's no more WCG. ESWC has been taken over, of course, by the Saudis. It's not a true Nations versus Nations event. It's not allowed in Counter-Strike. There seems to be a void filled. Do you two believe that a Counter-Strike World Cup um, would be good for the game and the, uh, you know, the esports scene? Uh... The only one that the only person that could probably run it right now is ESL. I mean, I would, I'd be ready to start and just kind of like back to the Olympics thing in general. Like it just that what you just described to me is exactly like what upsets me about the World Cup to tie them together is like you're doing all this stuff. But like we're not even seeing like like a real like nothing makes sense. Like you're not actually getting the teams. Oh, Slasher turn off his thing. Now my now it's all messed up. Slasher, put your camera back on. Put it back. There we go. What did I do? What did yeah, I do? Okay. You turned okay, it off. Bad. No, it's okay. Yep. Don't touch anything. Stop it. No, it's like, uh, 
you're getting the the esports Olympics without basically all the top esports. Like that's just disappointing. And then if you want to like then back, like bring it all back right. around to like CS, do I think it'd be interesting? Uh, or like, should we have it? We had it yeah, should back we have before. It? It, we had it before. It was. I'm not gonna like pretend like it was a great polished product, but we there. It did exist. It was WCG that yeah, did WCG. it. WCG. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty years ago. By the way, WCG is still around. It does still exist. They had an event a couple months ago. You probably didn't even know. Yeah. No. But so what I was gonna say is, but when we had it, people didn't really. It, there. There really wasn't much interest. I just yeah, feel like was. Yeah. Yeah, there was the prize pool. Crazy. I, I winning don't know. WCG can, wait, was more I, important I, than winning CPL I, in a lot of people's eyes. I, winning WCG I, was more important than winning CPL. Okay, then. the time frame of what you're talking about is very important. Okay, so like the I CPL days, corner, I can't speak to. Yeah, go ahead. So, with regards to the Olympics, I, I didn't want to like. I thought I was being fucking dumb for a second until someone in my chat mentioned it. Isn't it supposed to be that like? The professionals that are actually like paid in salary to do stuff aren't supposed to really compete in the Olympics. No, that's not true. Because like the, sa- basketball is the best example because we send you know it was like that for some sports, Josh, for a little while. Like yeah, that's not what's what sports and why and yeah, it's just I the mean, any. The, the dream team is a great example of how we send our bet that athletes to go to the Olympics every year to represent um, the United States. Certain leagues like the NHL have been restricting athletes from going to the Olympics. But personally, I think the NHL is fucking stupid. (laughs) All of the NHL's efforts to stop their being the best hockey players from going to the Olympics is fucking dumb. I do not think that is a good way of looking at it. The NHL has totally fucked up the international competition. So I think the, the way the NBA encourages its best players to represent USA like this year's USA basketball team is fucking crazy. You have LeBron and Curry playing for the first time, and KD so is one of the most. Some sports do allow professionals, and other sports don't. Pretty much, yeah. I think for I think without being like over the top and like trying to get into the details, is some some teams are amateur teams basically, and some teams are legitimately professionals. And then depending on which sport, it varies. It's not really like a, it's not a yes or no answer unfortunately but yeah you're not wrong some sports take it more seriously than others like here in america basketball the basketball the olympics for basketball is definitely a hugely important thing before the dream team was assembled initially with uh jordan and bird it, they used to send amateurs and college players but they they have formed the dream team specifically to be like okay Let's actually send our be- the best players in the world. Let's use Jordan and Magic and Bird and send them together, and they can go, you know, dominate. Okay, so so there's some sports that do and some sports that don't allow this stuff, and then the sports that do allow professional athletes, like there's limitations to how many, like most two of, or three people or something like that. Most so, of the biggest ones that do, though. No, there's Swimming, no limitation. Track and field. Yeah. There's no limitation. I, no, I was reading something no. about soccer is uh, allowed okay, three man. above the age of 23, and then well, stuff about NBA only let like two NBA players or something. No, no, no. The ball no, is no, three. No, pro- no, no? That's not right. No, no, no. NBA. Uh, the, the, the NBA the, one isn't right. The I don't have a soccer. The team is all NBA players. Um, like the dream team, they had one college player, which is Christian Leitner, back in the okay. old days. But no, soccer is a little bit different because – from what I understand, most people don't care about the Olympic soccer. They already have the World Cup, and they already have the Euros, and they already have the Champions League. And, like, after all the good shit, the Olympics are, like, the sixth or seventh most important thing in soccer, which is why I don't think a lot of the actual athletes don't care about winning the Olympics nearly compared to about winning a Champions League or a Euro Cup or a World Cup. So why couldn't Counter-Strike be done in the same fashion where it's, like, you know, kind of down the list and you make a national team with... No, Some, no, like, streamers or something. No, but oh, no? I was I was asking you guys. Oh, okay. That's yeah. where he was going with it. The, 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 the initial <laughs> okay. question was: Do you think <laughs> a World it. Cup for Counter Strike um, would be a good thing? I think personally, it not only would be a good thing; it's necessary. I think we definitely need a worldwide Nations Cup slash World Cup 
for Counter-Strike, if the Olympics can't do it because of no shooters and because it goes against their violence ethics policy, which is hilarious because they have slaves building the stadiums <laughs> okay. over there and they, they kill tens of thousands all of right, people. All right, all right, simmer down, simmer no, down, simmer down. Fine. It's fine. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's, I, I, I won't talk about it. Um, I, I won't talk about it, but <laughs> they, they, then counter, I really do think there is a huge opening now for Counter Strike to have that tournament. Now, it being run by an ESL or I think PGL would be great. You know, no, no bias here. <laughs> um, disclaimer: I do do work for PGL sometimes. Um, or a blast. Uh, of course, those are like the three. Now, like the logistics of running this type of thing is going to be just as crazy as the the actual Olympics doing it for all those other games. Yeah. In terms of the, there's no national bodies to pick the actual players and who's going to pick the coaches and who's the GM and how all of that works, I have no idea. The IESF, which has been running in Counter Strike for a long time, <laughs> is one of the biggest jokes in all of esports. No one actually respects IESF. No one gives a shit about IESF. I think IESF is actually running right now. I think I believe I just saw a news article that now was supposed to represent USA as the American team for IESF. Is that what that and was? They, and they dropped out. Yes. But okay. anyone who understands, no, Nouns is not the best American team in Counter Strike. You're automatically giving a you know lesser competition. It's basically what Josh is saying. You're sending like the tier four team, no disrespect to Nouns out there, to to go represent America to try to you know win a gold medal. And nobody is really going to care about that because Nouns is. Um, and we're going to do this exercise in a second. No one considers anyone on Nouns to be representing America if you had to pick five players, um, you know, in the best United States. I just, so I think it'd be cool. You'd, you'd only be picking four players because Elise is on that team. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think it'd be cool, but like, I just, being realistic in my head, there's just no, like, you just literally laid it out why it's not really going to work. And then, on top of that, next year we lose the partner team. So the amount of events that are hypothetically and it seems like already are going to exist and overlap, adding anything like this for the actual tier one players to participate in, while I think it'd be cool, I just don't I don't I don't see there's any way that you could fit it in the into the Why schedule. Why not have Valve do it instead of having Because Valve doesn't want to do anything? Okay, they do the international Dota. <laughs> they get, their, first, their, their first event for Counter Strike could be the World Cup. That is the event that Valve hosts. They 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 uh, they whitelist out the majors to different tournament organizers, and the only tournament that they run themselves, like TI and Dota, is the World Cup for Counter Strike. How do you stay so positive? It's really hard. <laughs> like I'm just I was just like you just you are so. Glass half full for Valve, and I appreciate it, and I like Valve too, but if you think Valve is planning any of this or would ever do this, I just think, you, you know, you're just a little, you're a little too optimistic over there. Hey, EGL runs TI for Valve most of the time. They could do the same thing for... No, uh, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it makes sense. It, it and it's just gonna piss off the players because they're they're next year. I could tell you between PGL Blast and ESL, and then entering potentially Star Ladder, which is a rumor I heard. You, you're, it's gonna be fucked. You're gonna now. You now you want Valve to add in more Valve. I want Valve just to continue to support the scene, and and create like make majors more like. Like make majors stand out more without like completely making it into international. I want them to focus on what we already have and make that better rather than adding more shit. We don't need more shit. Next year is going to show us that we don't need more shit. And I I'm not like, I don't want the partner teams back necessarily. Shit I as in like quantity of things or quality yes, of things? quantity. Like There's just going to be a ton okay. of tournaments, I feel like, next year that... We're, I mean, Eric literally just tweeted out, you know, if you're nouns or if you're any team trying to qualify for an event, they literally, there's two qualifiers at the exact same time. You know how, like, this is going to just get worse and it's just going to be yeah, amplified. There's better, gonna, so you don't have to qualify. True. But also now because they're getting rid of partner teams, that's going to kind of get weird too. So you can have to play a lot it more anyway. Good for esports. Look what the, look what the Olympics are doing for the NBA. Look what the world baseball classic did for. I'm baseball. not saying it wouldn't be cool. I'm seeing just saying it's going to be a cluster. Seeing, Mike Trout, seeing Otani versus Mike Trout, Japan versus USA for the final game, the final at bat of the world baseball classic was incredible. It was better than the world series that year. 
for, for, I don't give a shit about watching what was it, the Diamondbacks and the fucking Rangers or whatever. Who gives a fucking what the care? Hell? Japan versus USA was a hundred times better than that World Series. And I feel like those are the things. And I'm so excited to watch Team USA uh, basketball this year. Um, and the Olympics is going to start in a week or two. I think like that is really good and could be good for Counter Strike. It would be great for the game and it would be great for the esport. Um, for I just think we're not so we... there yet. I just think we're sure. not there yet. Like, give it okay, if fine. you want to do it. Like, if you want to do this, like, I think you have to at least see where the dust settles next year after all the changes that Valve just made to the scene. Well, the, the Olympics itself might be a good way to showcase to Valve that it's important or another tournament organizer. I feel like it's going to do the exact opposite. Valve. Okay, look, I, I, for all the things, the negative things that Saudis are doing, they have a ton of money. They are going to try to make this a, a success. I think Damn, are you chilling for the Saudis now? It's like a full 180 I on one podcast. I didn't watch any DWC, <laughs> but League of Legends had over a million concurrent viewers, and the Counter-Strike viewership was okay. So it's not it's like my, my, my protesting of EWC did not affect the normal viewer watching the tournaments. No, and I don't think it is. In format and all that stuff did not matter for the average person. So the Olympics probably are going to be successful no matter how much protests or people don't care or any of that. Um, I think it'll do well. Maybe it could show um, CF people. Okay, so Fom, I'm just going to ignore you. And, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Not uh -oh. We are going to do a thought experiment now, uh, based off of this news, and we are going to build the starting five for Team USA and for Team Canada um, about who we would pick as the five players who represent the country, um, the five best players who represent the country for each. USA and Canada, if there was a World Cup, and you pick the coach as well. Holy. Okay, I'll do US, you do Canada. You have the ways you're Are job. we doing skill based or are we doing also like do the personalities need uh, to fit? I think you, you got to consider everything. I definitely think you have you to gotta consider, consider everything. Okay. Oh. You want me to do Canada? There's like five Canadian. I know. I, I gave you the easy one. You're Canadian. So Grow up. <laughs> I don't even. Hold on. I got to see how many players even play in the U.S. Hold on one sec. Let me see. Hold on. I got to go through the. So who do we got? I mean, We're so you only fun. have to pick four people because you got a liege on that. I list. got a liege. Like, if you don't, you're on drugs. No, it's just a liege, but like a liege and friends. Like, where are we at? Like, <laughs> I mean, that's what complexity is. I know. So I guess. Oh god! It's basically just you have to take the core complexity. I mean, uh, just what like the leash floppy jam grim? Yeah, which feels All weird. Three? Who else am I supposed to get? I could I, I could maybe get wouldn't. Lake over. I'd probably take like Lake over Grim. I think Lake's yeah. a pretty good shout for for that. I yeah, I'd put I put Lake think on there. I think he's still got some. Still got some stuff to learn and stuff because he's like still pretty young and inexperienced. But yeah, I, but he's I got a leash got there, a, you know. He's got a leash. He's got uh, a leash. <laughs> True. I, I think he's uh, I think he's on the right track for sure. I think you're taking both Floppy and Grim. No, no, I'm gonna take a leash. I'll take a leash and Floppy and then Lake, and then oh god, who is your who is your opper? I'm thinking. OC? Give me. It has to be OC. Uh... Has OC done enough? Dude, you got you got Pone alone ready. <laughs> Give me OC the and then Swisher, and then Coach. That's it. You, that was five. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're Adren, call me biased. Actually, wait, no, no, no. Hold on, I didn't get an IGL, and chat's right. Oh, I got to bring in the captain. Right. No, no, I got to bring in the captain. I have to bring in the captain. The captain should be the first person that you're choosing. Grow up. I just had to remember five U.S. players right now. It's kind of scuffed, okay? <laughs> There's a bunch hard. of Canadians cosplaying as NA players, right? So, like, I have to cheer for them all the time. I know that. I know they're Canadian. But as soon as I got to make a U.S. only team, I'm just scuffed. He's over there. He just gets to start with twist naff. Like, oh, yeah, it must be sick. Like, I'll just go and fuck me. myself. Okay, grow up. And, all right. Yeah, <laughs> Don't do <laughs> Josh isn't no, okay, so that, Nitro, okay, Nitro, Alige, Floppy. Nitro? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, that's Nigel. That's, that's what he meant. meant. That's, that's, that's what he meant. meant but that's, that's literally the, the captain. Started. That is the captain. Grow up. That's, Shut that's up. That's what he meant by the captain, not like an, like a, a team captain. Oh, you meant I hate captain this. America. I can't. Uh, we're all washed. I don't know who's not washed. Like, everybody's washed <laughs> except for Alige. 
I mean this so in the nicest way possible. Yeah, pick some young kids. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I so think, we'll go Liege, Lake, Swisher, Floppy or Old. Lake, Lake and Swisher are good picks. I know. Nitro and then OC. Okay. Is OC. Uh, OC has to be the upper. There, there is. There's no other options, right? It might be. I mean, he's outperformed Junior. Like, it's it's not really. It's just OC. Uh, OC, Nitro, Elige, Lake. Wait, is that, how many is that? Swisher. Like, Swisher. Swisher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Swisher's so, like Swisher's a glue guy too. Swisher's like that no guy that no breeze. <laughs> no, because no they take up some of the other spots. No, I think I'd have to roll with this. It, it's all scuff though, because literally every single player, you know what their potential is, and none of them are currently realizing it. And it's like I, you're making me pick like yeah, I'm split. Cooper. Yeah, I mean I'm splitting hairs on who's gonna too. show up for the day. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. So you got yeah, Cooper, you got Freakazoid. Maybe. Oh god, I got Stewie too. I could have Stewie in yeah, there. Yeah, Stewart two thousand. I, I, I know, and I started with Stewie. Stew. I know. All these guys on a daily you, basis yes. too. Let me be. Don't gaslight. <laughs> Look at you. you just Plum, over there. Plum told me he was a one hundred percent going to put Stewie on this team, and we just did this entire exercise, and you didn't even remember his That's name. It's because I went it's through the cool. teams. That's... I was pulling up HLTV, looking at who's American. Him. You just argued about pushing the planter in a smoke or whatever. We argued? Not, yeah, uh, probably. I don't know. I tuned, I tuned in We're on bugging. some run on Dust 2 where there's something about, like, you thought you should just wait for him to plant or something like that. Oh, okay. No. God. Are you putting Steel in? Okay, go to, go to Steel. In. He's got a way easier job. And then I'm going to I'm gonna figure mine out real All quick. Right. Okay, uh, me, do you want to do Team USA or would you have to start with Canada? Me? Oh, we're both in USA and Well, there's only like five Canada? Canadian yeah. players. They just happen to be really good. So, like, it's. All right, let me uh, <laughs> let me look at rankings. <laughs> Go. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> this is why I didn't have Stu because I was pulling up the teams to like pick. Like, I was looking. I was like, all right, that's right. Who do I got? There's no there's no Canada filter though. There's no like country. No, oh, you, you, no, there's there not. Is. Yeah, there is. There is. There is. Oh, there is. You're smarter than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're okay. No surprise. <laughs> real, real fucking short list right now. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me go like last 12 months. Let's, okay. It's not much better. Okay. There's Nath, there's Twist. Okay. You got, mm -hmm. um, can I put myself on that list to make it a little bit shorter? Yes. I, okay. I'll put, my, I, I'll put you, myself okay, and then better, there's. Better question, Josh. Do you believe you could be the leader to bring everybody together? Will uh, we'll Naff and Twist will listen to you? Be honest. Will we'll Naff and, and Twist listen I don't, to you? Naff and Twist didn't listen to Katie, and <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to listen to me. So, but we can we can try and hope. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can give it our just, best shot. Going, just going based off this stuff, it, it goes to like Fang, Hex, Welka, something like that. But like, you need an opera in there, so you know that's where it comes back to me again. <laughs> Is there a Canadian opera? Yeah, wait, you don't have any, right? Um, no I don't one? believe so. The the only how can I? I'm like, trying I'm to looking at think of a Canadian top 50 opera. teams. Yeah, I'm looking there, at top 50 teams a, too. There's, okay, there's there's another way to do this though. What what we could do is we could go to um, full complete rankings, regional rankings. There's not you can't even filter Canada, <laughs> North America. Okay, m has got none. No, it's Fang, really this hexed Fang Twist Nap, and then a fifth. I think it actually has to Freshy. be Steel. Like not even joking. I think it actually has to be still. <laughs> like we're going down. We're getting like drop jewels. Ste Melio Tensky. Like we're going real far down right now. Like, steel Goose is now Peter. officially on the team by default because like, they could not feel the fit. I'm on top seventeen teams in fucking NA. Jesus. Uh, uh, do you see. think you can outperform DAPS right now? In the server, yes, hundred percent. Uh, okay. You, you are the fifth. Is Daps your coach? If, if he wants to be coach, if he thinks he can reel in twist and enough, sure. All right, all right, all right, all right. I think. Okay, I, I'm just gonna go the grand slam route. Forget it. We'll go Stu Nitro Brain Trust. We'll go Alige OC. Oh God. Lake, you're, you're young. We'll just the kids. No, no, no we're gonna. No, no, shut up. Shut up. I have one more, and I was gonna say, Lake, don't interrupt me. Sorry, Lake. We're gonna put him in pit. He's gonna be like Mobs. He's gonna find his way in pit, and he's gonna just. 
He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna learn under the brain trust of Stu and Nitro and Elise, and he's gonna be a god. And then OC will find his form with the European Liquid team that he had when that team was an absolute dysfunctional mess that was awful, and he was somehow the bright part of it. <laughs> and my team's gonna win, easy peasy, because Josh can't off. Okay, this uh, so my US team. It's gonna get a little funny, okay? I have no idea if this per this this team could be the greatest, but if they lose uh, a round, it might implode, okay? <laughs> Elige, Plasia, CXI. Oh my god! If they lose an uh, eco round, they're leaving the server. <laughs> <laughs> um, Swisher and throwing an opera in there. Um, I'll I'll roll the dice on a pwn alone. A nice young right pwn. All right. Pwn alone right. will literally smack one oh, of wait, them. Wait, wait, fuck. Lake's also here, though. Fuck. Uh, I could put Lake in for one of the... Uh, I could no, put Lake you in are trolling. Guys. This is Lake's a troll. Lake's a substitute. What do you mean? How is that a troll? What, what about my coach? Was I just troll. basically did Grand Slam. You know what? Okay, you know what? Elysian and CXEI probably not on the same team because they have the exact same roles. I put Lake instead of CXEI. Honestly, could work. Does somebody... Who's going to reel in Klesia? Who's your coach? Who's your coach right now? Who's my coach? Um, American coach. Uh, take Zula. I, I would I would put James IRL um, or he's MC. He's Australian, isn't he? No. James no, James, IRL, no, 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 no. Very no, much no, not Australian. <laughs> he's born and bred in, I think, San Diego or some shit. But um, yeah, I'd put James or MC as coach. Even oh, the MC reference. Boring. Oh, my God. I respect yep. that. I respect it. But all I'm getting oh, from God. this um, conversation, has Grimm's stock fallen that far? I think Grimm is really good in uh, as a system player, and I think MCE was able to get a lot out of him as a result of that. But that's basically like the, the whole way that MCE had that Triumph roster was basically like set setups where everyone had like a specific job and he was in a position where he could literally just pivot between two different spots and bait his teammates and literally just delete people with his insane fucking aim. And his aim is really fucking good. Yep. But I think because of the system, he never really had to learn how to uh, play for himself, play by himself and not like be able to like bait his teammates and stuff like that. And also like make his own decisions. He was never forced into those situations. Everything was spoon fed. And the Triumph roster was really good when uh, they were playing against teams that were kind of on equal footing or worse. But whenever you're playing against teams that could adapt or had really heavy hitters that could, you know, pick apart the setup without instantly getting traded or just multi killed, I think that's when they fell apart because they didn't have anything else to fall back on. It's like they had that setup. And if it didn't work, they had nothing else because they couldn't adapt or, or think for themselves or know when to change it and, and move out of it. Um, and when he went to Liquid first, especially, um, like, I don't know how much IGLing Nitro did with players like Naf and Twist and Elige that all kind of like the defaulty style, have their own individual decision making and like to just fucking move around and do their own shit. Like, Elige isn't sitting there waiting to be told what to do. He's fucking moving around doing whatever the fuck he thinks is right, wherever he thinks he's going to get kills, yep. uh, taking timings, playing off of info. Same shit with Naf and Twist as well. Like, they're not sitting there making these setups and strats and stuff like that. So when you have Grim just getting slotted in there, and he has to play off of a liege, playing off instinct, and playing off, like, the reads that he has based on info, and he doesn't know how to, like, navigate those situations, he's not going to be able to perform as well. And and then he's going from someone that's, like, 1.3 rating fucking deleting everyone to not knowing where he's supposed to be positioned. He's going to have a massive uh, performance fall off. And then people are looking at him like, why the fuck does he suck right now? He's got all these insane players around him. And then his confidence probably eats shit too. Yeah. Is, is Lake being overvalued? Oh, sorry. If you wanted to respond. Is, oh, no. Sorry, well, I was Lake, just going to add. Uh, well, yeah, no, we'll is, get to is Lake. Lake being overvalued. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to Lake just because, yeah. No, I, th I just wanted to add that I think you're right. I can't really talk about the Triumph roster because I know you're a lot closer with MCE than, for example, like you probably know what actually was going on there and you had some really cool insight. I just think it's a little, it, it is very simple and you touched on it at the end. I think when he was in Liquid, whatever happened, it doesn't really matter the sequence of events. What, what matters is I think he's lost his mojo, his confidence a bit. And I think in complexity he was actually starting to get back get it back and this isn't anybody's fault but i think when a came in 
I think it was hard for Grimm to maintain that because of the situations that Josh is kind of like explaining and laying out. And I think it kind of compounded it. You know, it's the way that when you have a player like Grimm who is so individually talented, but maybe like just isn't comfortable in the setting that he's in, it, it just shows. And then when you lose your confidence, it compounds and it makes it worse. And then it, it's hard to, it's like one of the hardest things to get out of when you lose your ego a little bit and you, you're, you're trying to find it again. It, it's, it's one of the hardest things probably to do. Uh, not just in like Counter Strike, but just like in general. Uh, but yeah, we can talk. Uh, you know, since you already said it with Lake, uh, is this is this kid who's just been dominating tier two and is now going to find difficulty in a tier one setting, or is he the real deal? Deserves as of now to, to answer a hypothetical question of Team USA, he deserves a spot on a starting five. As as Torqued alumni, I think Lake is has demonstrated that he can play at a really high level. So. I've only played like uh, random cups and ca like cash cups and like mythic qualifiers or whatever for with him, and uh, he communicates well. He has good mechanics, and he's able to like think about the game. So whether or not he's at that level right now um, is up for debate. But the he's got all the parts in order for him to get to that uh, place. So he he will think about the game. He will take feedback. He's not afraid to speak his mind and, and give other people feedback or uh, ask questions. Uh, and then on top of that, he does have skill and and a pretty good, decent understanding of you know tactics, strategy, uh, like understanding like when you're supposed to, how you're supposed to react. And he has killer instinct. Knows when he has to just go and make a play. So I th I think he's got the parts. It's just a matter um, matter of realizing all that potential yeah you know i think part of the thought exercise too of like doing the olympic team like you're saying hypothetical all that stuff yeah i think you know part of olympic teams although josh didn't really know like you know all the rules with the rosters of olympic teams uh okay. you know no no but i'm just saying like i think you already picked up on it which is you know slashers teasing like we're all teasing each other with like the picks we're making but a lot of those teams you have like a mix of the old and the new and so I don't necessarily, like, I'm not, I don't think Lake's bad. I'm just saying a part of that is you see the potential and it is a mix of the old and the new. And right now, in terms of prospects in from specifically the U.S., yeah, like he is, he is probably the youngest, like brightest prospect we have because a lot of the so other like players, JBA. yeah, JBA is really good too. Um, the, a lot of the other players, and I hate saying this because it's going to like perpetuate this narrative that I don't think is entirely true, but you have a lot of older Brain players. Oh, no, sure. no, we just have a lot of older players that are still playing, right? A lot of like, like, so you have like Breeze, like automatics who are like good players who I don't think like they're bad, but like when you're trying to do this hypothetical, you're mixing both, right? You're mixing the old and the new. And right now, like we have a lot of those players where we know what they are capable of, but they're not necessarily achieving that all the time. Where Lake, we see, like Josh said, he's got the fundamentals. You know that he has the base there. It's just kind of like, where is his ceiling and where, how far can he take it? And it's exciting. And it's a lot more fun in those types of situations to have a player like that, especially around older players, because, you know, if in this perfect hypothetical we've developed, Ideally, he would probably learn a little bit too. Playing with somebody like like uh, like being with Stu or Nitro or Elise or whatever, it, it could be anything. He could pick up things and bring them to his own game. That kind of stuff. I got to say, one of the biggest problems that I'm just seeing is that the IGL portion is a big problem. There is a lack of strong IGLs in the United States. Okay, I'm unbanned after next major. True. I mean, no, you're still, you're still Canada, okay? You're still. Oh, that's right. you're, you're... <laughs> Wait, is it citizenship or you know is it residency? Oh my uh, god, it's citizenship. <laughs> if you have dual, right, then you I'm okay. Well, actually, no, it's nationality. Like for so, uh, in I'll be B Team UK. <laughs> in, in B, it was like a, <laughs> I think it was in B is from Cameroon, and he grew up in France, but he plays for the Philadelphia 76ers right now. He's on Team USA. He could have chosen Cameroon or France, but decided to pick America. Olympics are pretty loose with if you have affiliation either by birth and or residency, you have options to choose which one. Oh, so you, you could want pick, to, Josh. Uh, you could pick. Look at that. Which country you want to pick from. Yeah. So what I think I you actually could do Team USA if you wanted to. But 
you could. What and was the first point, question before we started talking look, about residency? What was uh, well, sorry? Just, if I had to, because it was the because I'm trying to pick like my team too. I think like Elise is the the lock. Oh, I'm gonna, gonna say too. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go off with you guys that that Lake Lake, Lake and Elise are the two must picks. I think the IGL is super important, but who is the American IGL? Like, Nitro. Flan pick Nitro. I, okay, I do not. I'm Nitro not has had a great this. career. Nitro has <laughs> had a fantastic esports career. I think him f- being able to finesse these organizations, going from oh my god, that is that sounds like is incredible. Really, I gotta hand it to him. There is no fucking way I could choose him for. Okay, then who are you picking? I don't know. Right. I so then, so pick not, someone. Go ahead. Two. Uh, go ahead. You tell me. Daps, FNS, Steel, Stanislaw, Walco. <laughs> this is oh, wait. All, all Canadian. No, no, it's US. Yeah, yeah, it's, be yeah US. it's US. I mean, are you going to make Stu um, IGL? I don't think he wants wait, IGL. Who, who's, who's Nouns IGL? Who's Nouns is IGL? Carson. Uh, Carson, but he's first time IGL, and I don't know. Well, if they've it's... been doing pretty good. I think I've been impressed with Nouns. I mean, I think they've. Anyone got... with hands could be doing pretty good. <laughs> Nouns is getting to the point where it it matters. Like you're you're not wrong. They're maybe, doing maybe, fine. Maybe. No, no, maybe, but like maybe. they're stuck. No, they can't win the final. They they lost three finals to qualify for three different like events. Um, and it was in the they same. They loosen spot. noobs too. Like I fucking I've made random pug teams and beaten nouns. Like it's. Well, okay, I'm but sure with Lake. But, but but disregarding the random pug teams, they literally were like upper bracket would go into finals lose. Like they they yeah. they're stuck. So, I mean, well, yeah, I guess, number, who's after that? What are the well, who's after Carson? Uh, well, ben here's the thing Lee. I would say about ben Carson. Lee. The thing the thing I would say about Carson is like, you know, you could give anyone IGL of a team for fucking three months, and they're on the same level as Carson in terms of like experience as IGL. Like that's how recent he started doing it. Maybe I'm exaggerating that a little bit, but like. It, it wasn't like a thing where he was IGL for a long time. He was, he started, I'm pretty sure, in CS2. Um, so it's like within no, no, the last Carson was in Go. He, Carson was in Go. In Go as well? Or are okay. you saying well, IGLing or playing? How long? Like IGLing. I mean, oh, I know that oh. he played CS2. Sorry, like sorry, IGL, sorry. Like I, I misunderstood. He's been IGLing for since only CS2. Yeah, only nouns. Who's the only nouns. the IGL on team before, but yeah. I've been impressed enough with how Nouns has played, even within NA. Of course, I haven't really been able to put it on the international stage. I think I would take Carson. I think at this point, if it's, if my choice is Nitro or Carson, I'm choosing Carson. I, I mean, like, I... Okay, sure. If, if those are the only... <laughs> it feels like those are the only two options. I, maybe it actually takes steel. I he broke Josh. He, bro- he just said... <laughs> no, no, when he says nothing, that's actually the worst. Like... <laughs> If he just says sure, you don't want that. That's not the right. <laughs> uh, OC has to be the opera, and so there's only one spot remaining. You know, my head tells me floppy because he has the experience. He already has a synergy with the Weege. I think that would be a good core. My heart tells me Stu. They play on opposite sides of the fucking map. Like, what does their synergy fucking matter? <laughs> My heart still tells me Stu. I think Stewie plays better in an American uniform than he would anywhere else. I think he would be more selfless playing for Team USA. It would be like his time on G2. I think Stewie would be down to play for his country and do what it would take to win instead of traditional Stu, which may be more I want to be the man. Everyone knows this is Elysia's team. Team USA is Elysia's team. He's just like LeBron on Team USA for the NBA. <laughs> no, how many other? Yeah. Even though they LeBron has Curry, you know, that worked out. That worked out last time. They actually. do have similar I hair. Mention it. Wait, what? You know the Stu Elysia project last time worked out pretty well. I I remember now that you're yeah yeah. yeah. Well, hey, they really <laughs> Hey, Stu Elysia did win a Grand Slam though. That I mean, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And? All right, no, no. I think we've, I think we've gotten through the Olympics enough on I this one. I won an ESA invite land, and <laughs> like, you're in 2024, bro. One's a little bit more impressive, though. True. But what you got? Anything else for us, Slasher? Um, Just because I, I think mean, the, 
Well, how many? For, did for you pick your full tournament. team, right? That was your full team? Yeah, that was my full team. I'm taking Stu for the vibes. Uh, I'm not expecting to win. Though I do think he would play better for Team USA in, than, than a club team at this point. I do think he would. Yeah. I, and I mean, Stu would he, treat Team USA like he would treat Nico and Monazi. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> um, just just checking about, the temperature here. Okay, it's about what's on the front of the jersey, not what's on the back. All right, you get. <laughs> we're just we're just busting out all the quotes now. Perfect. So to kind of like pivot from that in terms of like Team USA and Team Canada, really all I got out from EWC in terms of Team North America, um, with M80 and Complexity is that. Are things never going to get better? Are we just perpetually screwed this entire region? We had like moments of brief moments of happiness for both Team Liquid, Complexity, and M80 over the course of the last year, but we feels like we haven't gotten any. It feels like we're no closer to we're not. winning a major, to winning like a tier one tournament. And we're, it feels it really feels like we're back at the beginning again, even though maybe we should not take too much stock in what happened to EWC. I mean, you have to keep in mind that all the tier one pros or like the, the best pros from, sorry, let me rephrase. The best pros in North America that had orgs, so like 10 players total, maybe, stayed in CS. Everyone else went to Valorant. Like literally like 100 plus tier two pros, the, the next closest people in line. So when you have that big ass vacuum of knowledge and everything just disappearing, it's going to take a while to to get everyone to catch back up, especially when it's like newer players aren't really playing CS, they're playing Valorant. So you have like we're talking about Lake and JBA, they're like two newish players and everyone else has been playing still. They were in tier like 17, you know, in 2020 and then everyone dipped to Valorant and now suddenly they're tier two now. You know, and we we're talking about like Carson and the, the Nouns roster. It, it was the same thing. Like those guys were on, you know, like top 14 teams in North America four years ago. And then, you know, suddenly they're top five teams. But did they, you know, uh, get top five in, in like 2019 levels of good in that time? No, it's just like all those other teams disappeared. So, you know, they're better than the rest, but there was like a lot fucking missing. And, they never were forced to piece that shit together because there's no fucking North American tournaments. Yeah. How many internationals did they go to? Well, yeah, and, so, and to, to just carry on what you're saying, like that we used to have the Pro League, which is what you always hear people like myself. I mean, shit, even Sponge, who isn't, you know, North American, talk about all the time because the Aussies played here. That's where Pro League was so successful in helping the scene from a North American perspective. It might not have been a great business decision for ESL, but you had... Like Josh was just mentioning, you had this vacuum of players all the way to tier two uh, or all the tier two players, like tier three players go to Valorant. These players were not like going to be playing probably internationally necessarily soon, but you also lost all these players that could have made that jump. Uh, there were some players that could have like that were already on the fringe. Some of the Josh's teammates, for example, like the chaos roster, those players, a few of them, I think could have immediately like stepped in on certain teams. But when you lose your tournaments in your region, th there's no player development. There's none. And not only did you lose your infrastructure of your tournaments inside your region, you also lost all the players simultaneously because so it was like a, it's a double whammy, right? You, you lost North America pro league and then Valorant came out. So you, you, made a vacuum of you, you took away all this opportunity then all this opportunity sprung up somewhere else and then now you have to play catch up with the rest of it with people that decided to stay in counter-strike over a longer period of time where they can't they have nobody like there's nobody here for them to like play under there was no organization that would support them there was nothing you were just stuck you were just absolutely stuck and there was no choice for you so what well, you asked like the first and, question what and all the games were online. There were no lands, and all the North American teams that were good enough for lands dipped out to Europe. Yep, because of COVID. So it was like literally because this like whirlwind of shit that all happened simultaneously. That all collectively basically just sent us back, like legitimately, probably like four or five years. And it's not like there's a wave of tournaments coming back either. You know, there's Launders I mean, Land that he's done one of. So good, good shit, Launders. 
Props to you. I think he's running another one. That'll be sick. You have Fragadelphia. Shout out Sasquatch, who's been doing the, the regional lands. The only online tournament has been me and now Jason Lake working together, and that's it. That's the only thing that exists. That's literally all that is here besides just Challenger and then trying to qualify into events. That's, like, horrible for building actual, like, teams and players. And so is it all doom and gloom? No. But are we... Should we have the expectations that we should be competitive with these other regions, especially considering the circumstances? Like, I think there is a version of a North American roster that can compete internationally and be a top 10 team. But I don't think, you know, similar. It, this isn't just like a North American problem, but contracts are a bitch and you're not always going to have the perfect combination of those players uh, that can do that. And I think that's kind of where we're at is. There isn't really the right combination right now, and we don't have enough players to be fucking around with different combinations, and there isn't a lot of players that are on their way up because of lack of opportunity, infrastructure, and development, and that's because of what we just did. Yeah, exactly. What we just described, you know, all the things that the whirlwind that that happened, we're still still playing catch up, and I don't think people realize that sometimes. Uh, Not all doom and gloom, but we got a long way to go. I mean, Liquid's kind of the exception here, but do either of you see Liquid Complexity, Nouns, NRG, or M80 at this current moment, do they have the ability to win, let's say, the Perfect World Major? I mean, I I guess you could say, yeah, obviously anybody has the ability, but I'm talking about, like, realistically. I think Complexity is by far the closest from them, and by saying by far, they just lost also to M80 on land. I think M80 is in a decent... I think M80 and and, and Complexity are on top. Liquid, uh, they could probably be pretty good. We're going to see them debut soon, right? At uh, uh, Blast? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and I I think Twist is IGLing, I think. I don't think they've even said... That's going to be an interesting experiment. Yeah, I... I am a huge hater of your best player becoming your IGL, so I don't really want to go too far down. Well, I mean, we could, but yeah, I think complexity, like he said, is uh, a step above, especially because you got to consider like domestically M80 might be close to complexity, but there's this experience gap and there's there's this internet, like it's just different. It's just different when you're playing all these international rosters and complexity is going to have way more reps, way more practice. Like they're not seeing things for the first time. They're not playing people for the first time. Everything is like known to them. And if you want to be glass half full, they have to be the most likely choice just because when CS2 first came out, they were able to show glimpses of what they're what what they're capable of doing if all the stars align so if you're giving me like a what's the perfect scenario they're the closest thing we have to it at the moment um but i still think it would be really unlikely i think if complexity made playoffs at the major that would be like i'd be so fucking happy you know what i mean that's that to me if they make playoffs that's basically winning the major which might sound depressing but it is the, but like also I think that's where we're at. I think that's I think that's the real like if you want a lofty goal right now, I think it's complexity making the the playoff major. Uh or playoffs for the major. Cause right now I uh, I don't it, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough for a little while. Uh it's when I think of complexity, I'm just not even sure. But like when I think about all the top teams, it's so also hard to predict like what's going to happen. Um, you know, you look at Vitality and they look to be so good and then suddenly they just suck. Spirit were looking like a wrecking ball, like Virtus Pro 2014. Yep. And then what the fuck just happened? Mao is like they were top team for a day and, and now it's like, where are you at? Um, same thing with FaZe. It's like anything can happen. All these teams are super funny. Navi were looking like uh, the major was a fluke and then they just like started sucking and, and then they win EWC. It's like, what's going on? G2 were like a meme on, then they go with a fucking stand in and uh, Nico IGLing and they win Dallas and then they get second place after a roster change at, at EWC as well. So it's like none of these top teams that are in the top five, six teams can really produce anything consistent either. And complexity is by the rankings, one of the what top eight, top 10 um in that kind of area so you know is it past the realm of possibility for them to make playoffs not at all 
No, I don't think it's impossible. I just like, like I said, like for me as a fan, like when somebody's talking about it, I just think like that, like that's the goal, I guess. Right. Like that's where I don't think, I think winning it will be a whole nother thing, but, and yeah, to your point, I think that's a valid, like really good take just in general is nobody's really definitively for any stretch at the moment in CS2 separated themselves at any point from like the rest of them phase for maybe a second was the closest. But the funny thing was, is they were losing in the finals. So like they were, they were participating and they were probably the most consistent. We team top team we had in CS2, but even they have like lost four. I don't want to say lost form is a bit dramatic, but like, they're not what they, they were not I mean, playing they won four tournaments in a row. And then they got like top two at a few. And then they yeah. got semifinals at a few. It so just feels like, like they're on a downward trajectory. To, yeah. Well, downward compared to like instead of winning everything, they're just not winning everything. <laughs> yeah, anymore. well, yeah, yeah. But it still feels that way. Hopefully things will be looking up soon. I guess we'll have a chance to see in a little bit. Oh. I guess it can't get any worse. Right, you know that's the NA slogan at this point. I feel like, but also it could. I mean, I mean, expectations are real. We are at another low point. I don't know how many low points we've been able to go to, but we are feels like at another one. We could have been Uh, at a real one if Jason didn't buy Cole back. I mean, like that's true. Like, like if what? If sorry, I didn't hear what you said. If days didn't what? No, no, I said (laughs) if Jason (laughs) didn't. If Jason didn't buy back complexity, there's. This could be even more grim at the moment. Like, I, who knows what would have happened with that roster if he didn't buy it back? Like, I don't actually know what would have, because it would have been easy necessarily to like get them out of. I don't know that that whole like it could be worse. Like, would you say it can't be worse? Like, I could definitely think of some things that have happened recently where like it could have gotten potentially worse. Yes. Well, it can't get any worse in Dave's tweets. <laughs> that's kind of the low. That's the lowest end possible for. He's back. He's getting them banned. He's back. He's running it back. I, I, I don't. I think if Val was going to extend, I think he's band, chilling, isn't he? Yeah, I don't know. He's probably just chilling. He's he's bored on Twitter. He's, I think he's chilling. He's cooking. He's cooking. I mean, like, I don't think. I mean, I don't think he he wants to compete. I think he's chilling with like uh, what he's got. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like comfy with whatever his routine is. A condition. All right, all right. <laughs> Dude, <bro. laughs> you got it. What's next? Do we got a anything else? We've been yapping for a minute. On over there, but Josh is DMing right now just to keep himself warm, so he's ready when he's unbanned to get this whole squadron. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll go. I'll go full time in uh, let's say a month. I'll. Uh, I'm gonna be informed by December. Let's just put it that way. All right. And then nope. when all the so shakeups happen, are, we'll see what happens. You are your ban is over pretty soon. Um, yep. It is your intent to keep competing. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna weigh the options in December area for like anything that I could do, whether it be broadcast work or playing. I would like to compete in CS, and I think I'm capable of it. Um, if I actually play full time and learn the maps and scrim and watch demos and. DM constantly, uh, like consistently. I think I'm definitely capable of it. It's just whether or not um, I could have a team buy into the fact that, you know, I am older and they might not want to give me any chances. If if I'm given the chance, I know that I can make something work. And if if none of the projects seem um, viable, then I'll, uh, I'd rather go into broadcast talent because I don't want to fuck around with people that might just like randomly backstab or just like not listen to me because I think my ideas are bad or whatever. Just completely ignore my calls. That's I mean, I know you, you you need to have confidence in yourself to not only be able to lead a team, but to be able to play at a, at a professional level. Um, do you still feel like in your current condition and of course getting the practice my current or, condition or whatever, fucking old? <laughs> no, like okay, it, is it, it, your quick switch ain't more, the same anymore, like, Josh. It ain't the same. Like, is it more like you're chasing the dragon? Well, okay, and you, now, don't, so. and you don't want to <laughs> let it go. Okay, you're chasing the dragon. You don't want to let it go, or you really think you still have the ability to win a tier one championship? Uh, it's kind I of mean, I, what. I think if I actually play the game full time, I, I can. I, I don't think my mechanics are going to be something where it's like. 
of sticking out like a sore thumb. He's good enough, is what he's saying. I'm I'm at least good enough, if not like. He's still got that. it. Listen, uh, someone was talking right. about you can play till you're 50, and Josh is gonna prove him right. True. <laughs> I'll be the first. I think I'm. I think I might be a few months older than Kerrigan, or we're, I, I forget how. Fuck, I forget where. Let me let me look born. at here. I'm, I'll look you up right now. Let me see how old you fucking are. Uh, he might be 1990. I'm 89. All right, hold on. Uh, I just pulled up his HLTV. He's 34. Where are you at? I'm 34. Is it months? But oh, I'll be 35 shit. this year. I don't know. Do you Were think you he needed Kerrigan? Do you think that um, having players believe in you and believe in your system, believe in you can lead them, is any less or more difficult than your time in Valorant? Um it's it's always an uphill battle every team even in cs i i had those issues even on like ghost and and on chaos the degree 100 thieves and valorant like every team i've had issues with uh getting people to buy in uh t1 it wasn't really my system dsg i had issues with that sh same shit just like getting people to just all buy in and the, the problem is um with some of the teams in valorant or some of the players they were really inexperienced and it was like uh, the coach's vision to build for like the the long term. So, you know, get people to, you know, they don't know how to make the proper decisions now, but, you know, give them three to six months time and then we'll be at a, a position. So it was very uh, less micro. Uh, but with Counter-Strike, uh, I mean, if, if people buy in, if, there's always one or two that, that don't want to, though, that think their ideas are better or, or whatever. But I mean... Is it going to be any different now than it was before? No, it was probably around the same, but it was already a struggle back then. Okay, I was being April fourteenth, twenty eight. Yeah, April fourteenth, nineteen ninety. Who's who's older? Yeah, I'm older by uh, five months. Ah, it's all good. Like I said, you're going to be a pioneer with the age. You're going to be the guy that came back and played till he's fifty, and then there's going to they're going to talk about you. There's going to be videos. The score True. is going to farm videos for you for decades. <laughs> F. That, that uh the score yeah man i mean so you've been you know covering a lot of valorant lately do you do you ever feel like you look at fns trying to return to nrg and that being a complete failure you you see how angel the end of his run on navi kind of seems like he's uh, between yeah, but like, like if you between like carrying the team to victory and holding them back it really feels like both of those guys are having a very um not the best way to end their career if this ends up being the last time both of those people play do you ever feel like you I, see that and you don't want that to be how I mean, you go out is it going to be worse is it going to be worse than whatever other situation i've been in yeah, I don't think he's worried about that one, Slash. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I feel like, in fact, he'd prefer it that way, if anything, if he had the choice. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I think I get where you were going, but that with Josh, I don't know if that was the. I think I mean, he the, would right much now, prefer. The last people think is like DSG and help sewers. Like, you, yeah, you no, think, I, I know, you I, think know you I know, I know. From there. Um, <laughs> so yeah. I think, I think FNS was, uh, I think that was a mistake to go to stop streaming when he was doing so well with it. Uh, and he kind of like retired on top type of thing where everyone remembered him for all the successes that he had. And he was like fucking his stream viewership was insane. And I, I think that's a mistake if uh, he he might fuck up his legacy that way uh, to a degree. Um, when it, who was the other person you mentioned? Angel. It seems like Angel? his time is it seems like this his, might be the end. Yeah, I, I like when I look at Angel play. So FNS's issues, right? Like as a player, are definitely his mechanics holding him back. I don't. Uh, maybe he has better decision making in scrims than he does in matches, or or feels nervous or something. But when I watch Angel play, like he does the he does fucking troll shit. Like I see some of the blunders that Kerrigan does, and it's like it doesn't even pale in comparison to some of the shit that Angel does. Like he is full on. Grief <laughs> some moments. Um, it's all down to like decision making and stuff too. Um, I think if I'm actually VOD reviewing, uh, like actively watching myself play and not only my teammates or other teams, I think I can hold myself to a higher standard and not make those same uh, sort of blunders. And like the way I, I'm even playing right now is I'm very consciously uh, paying attention to 
kind of like the decisions I make to make sure I'm making the, the right decisions. Um, but would you consider I, I all options? Like, would you join a tier two European team and try to like work your way through the ranks if that's your only possibility? I mean, if if I'm doing a relocation, it needs to be for the, the right project, which means the team that I believe in, but also the right uh, financial situation because doesn't really work with kind of like uprooting everything to to do that. Um, you still for, feel like you, you know, got the juice though. And I, I know that uh, FNS, and a, FNS and Angel both still feel like they can play. They can compete. I'm sure Adren, um, maybe Farm, you could speak to him. I'm sure he still feels like he probably can compete. Um, uh, maybe, that, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that has subsided in the last like year or so. Eric's dad, Dren, now he's he's full he's full dad. Oh mode. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so, I'm, the difference is I'm not having kids, so GG. <laughs> now he's gonna pick his for his team. That's that's what it's gonna feel like. He's gonna just have like five children. He's in charge of or four children. Oh shit. Nah, he's got the juice. Uh, Josh yeah, can come back. Listen better than some of these CS players. The do. the vacuum of IGLs, I mean, it just genuinely gives you inherent value immediately. It's I mean, just Nitro like, joining NRG really makes me believe that Steel could join a tier one team tomorrow, and that there would be no problem. But NRG isn't tier one, not yet. <sighs> They're a tier one org. <laughs> What? They're not. Well, also, I mean, that's not even con that's not like even controversial. Like it, okay? well, that's what matters. The salary. Here's a hot take. If uh if energy fail with nitro and then I feel like that's gonna indirectly hurt my stock, right? Because they'll they'll be like, Well, he's older, he's an IGL, he switched back from Valorant to CS and and look at look at what if Nitro can win the Grand Slam and all that stuff, like what's what's Steel gonna offer? I Maybe, feel like yeah. That, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. You better be cheering for energy then. I think, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a vacuum, and it's not just an, actually a North American problem. Every region just struggles to find IGLs. It's the most thankless position. Not Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to, like, and and, the, 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 and and ironically, the people that end up wanting to do it in the Tier 1 fucking level are all the star players that are, like, secondary callers who are making some good reads, and they're like, fuck it, give me the reins, I want to do this shit, and then they never, like, are the same, and it's like the same fucking script every single time so there's the 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 igl issue isn't really a uh it's it's not even it's literally every level is suffering from the same things josh laid out you could apply it to tier two tier one whatever the the, the issue is is it's your it always falls on you you have to sacrifice the most you also Basically, everybody thinks they can do your job and you have to make them buy into your job. And yeah, it's it's incredibly tough. I mean, he referenced it earlier. Look at Liquid, because sometimes, too, is people find success in other ways uh, than one another. And then somebody has to concede because you need everybody thinking the same exact way uh, to have this like an actual positive uh, like end to it. Otherwise, if you just have people that look at the game differently and play the game differently and you're never on the same page, you're just going to fail. doesn't really matter. It's like the age old saying of, you know, as, as long as even if it's the wrong plan, if we do it together, it's better than like people conflicting on the idea. It's the same logic just applied to like the team aspect. If you have people that have won in their own way and found success in their own way, but they're not the same like types of success or ty types of way of playing and they try to merge them, it usually fails. A, a, yeah, like a, that's a, it fails more when they have more okay. success because they they're more uh like empowered in in how they feel. So it's even harder. Well, that's that's kind of how I look at that liquid thing, right? Is like they had liquid uh they had Naf and Twist that played a very uh, specific kind of like on their own individual defaulty style and they yeah. had a lot of success with it. They pick up Kadian, who also in his own right had a lot of success with his own um kind of like style of calling and, and system and everything. And I feel like my style of calling, um, especially on CT sides, is is very similar to uh, to Cadian style. And so, you know, you give me players like Naf and Twist, I, I don't think they would kind of buy into my my system particularly. Um, so I might run into the same um, situation. So it, it does come down to uh, kind of like how people are used to playing. Like you pointed out, especially if they are have one playing a certain a specific style, and this is also comes back into our conversation about Grim, you know, on Liquid versus Grim on Triumph. Um, 
you need to be able to figure out which players can fit that system or style and then also buy in because it doesn't matter if they buy in if they're not used to it because now you have to retrain yeah them from like you know they got to the certain level playing a certain way and now you want them to completely rewire their brain and how they play that might be fucked up so yeah there's a delicate balance yep 100 percent uh, um yeah okay final topic okay we have been going we have been going a while i mean you did mention uh legacy earlier and um the brazilian team or just in... <laughs> no you okay. Yeah. That is Jesus mentioned, Christ! You are old mentioned, as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Legacy earlier, and I think it would be a good time to mention, considering Navi just won EWC. Um, Navi won the major earlier this year. They got second at a uh, class premiere um, last month. Is simple with him sitting out and not playing, and Navi excelling. And winning without him, wonderful, seems to be a very good fit on the team. Is Simple's legacy in question right now, especially considering him as the greatest of all time, which he definitely has been in the conversation along with Forrest um, uh, and Get Right, no, which are my, my, my three are Forrest, Get Right, and Simple as the kind of counter strike, not just go. Um, I think Simple is definitely in the Counter Strike all time, but is him not playing CS2 so far, and with Navi playing well, um, is this like a legitimate concern for him in how he will be looked at in terms of an all-time great player? Uh, I feel like it, it. I feel like the last years that he was playing and what he was able to do as an individual will never be kind of like a. a you know, there's never going to be a shadow like cast upon that unless he comes back and fucking sucks. Yeah. Like if he oh. comes back and sucks, he's fucked. If he retires right now, he's chill. If he comes back and he's, you know, playing well, but not like pop fucking one player in the world well, then, you know, maybe people will say like he's falling off, but I don't think every, anything's going to fuck with his legacy until someone else comes along and has, uh, puts up numbers as, consistently and for as long as he has well he wants to come back he has stated that he wants to and uh, is planning to play again i cannot see him think just he really wants to i feel like if he I mean, wanted to he I could be back be shocked i would be shocked if he just like retired and he never ended up coming back to cs2 maybe that would surprise me way more than Wait, him you, coming back and playing you do have to can keep in mind that he probably burnt the candle at both ends for all those years when he was creating that legacy. So when you look at someone like me who's fucking mid-30s and looking to do something, half this fucking time I was banned and not even competing, and the other half I was like, you know, getting backs up. So I never actually got the chance to, you know, show my worth or, or win anything. But for him, he fucking burnt it at both ends just to fucking set this number one player in the world for like, what, how many years in a row? I mean, it was a ridiculous amount. And when he wasn't one, he was two. And and it was also something that isn't really talked about enough when you talk about simple. It was the way in which he played. It wasn't just like he put up stats. Like Zaiwu, you know, it's like the Maui argument, but it is a good one. You know, when he talks about cultural impact and he gets <laughs> you know, but like, okay, but when you think about like simple, it is important to mention that because it, it wasn't just that he put up stats. It was the way in which he did it. There were moments and rounds that only Simple could win you a round. There was nobody that was in the server that was going to do it this like he did the it. This is the major. And as tacky as it, as corny as it might sound, when you fucking bring it back like that, it, it was sick. And it's still like, I feel like there isn't anybody that actually is playing the game that way. We might not ever see somebody play the game that way again because, the, you know, like everything, the game has gotten better as well. So like... Ideally, it should like it should be progressing at all times if it's like healthy. And so maybe we don't see that again. I think for me, I always have a hard time with the greatest of all time discussion. One, because I'm a source child and you also brought in Josh in here, who also is. So you mentioned two players. One of them I'm very good friends with, you know, in the goat conversation of greatest all times. And you're leaning heavily on 1.6. And I don't have anything to talk about with that, which I think is important because I think if you ever want to do like the goat conversation and you're talking about players, mm -hmm. you should distinguish the game. 
No. I, I do. That's how, like, I think of him as the goat that? of CSGO. That's how I think of it. I think it's, and it's undeniable, and I would never. Yeah, that's way easier. He, he obviously Yeah, is because the it makes way more sense, no, because people no, didn't no follow fun, stuff. That's like no, I know, but that's no fun. Obviously, uh, simple to go to CSGO. That's no fun. I'm setting the rules of this conversation, this hypothetical <laughs> fantasy conversation. Well, I did let him be the host. The, <laughs> the, the, whole, the whole point of making, talking about the GOAT debate fun is that you take the entirety of the franchise and you talk about being the GOAT of Counter-Strike. The obvious, an- there is no other answer for the counter- uh, the GOAT of CSGO. There's only one answer. No, it's I know. Simple. Okay, device maybe... Device and Nico, uh, device. No, it's simple. I don't think anybody are all like surrounding him. But, you know, device has the titles. I mean, the the biggest knock on simple is the lack of major championships and how long it took him to win a major championship. Device has the rings. And I think device is a solid answer. Device is a solid answer. Maybe simple isn't unanimous, but it's like, I think think it's as close to unanimous as you can get. Yeah, no, I, I, I do simplify. It does get simplified when you do that. But I just think it's also like it's when people get into like, it's uh, it's a little bit harder, right? Like you're trying to kind of have the discussion like it's a traditional sport. And that's not like a bad thing. But you got to realize that we do. This is different. We have different no, versions no, of the not. game. No, it's no not. It doesn't Jordan matter. didn't. It doesn't Jordan and LeBron are playing by the same rules. OK, except minus some of the no, uh, no, in, no. interesting no. refereeing. <laughs> That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. Because you add in Kareem, you add in Wilt. You, you. No, no, you're, I'm not talking about players. I'm not no, talking about players. Talking. You just mentioned Jordan and LeBron. And no, I no, know, I'm, I'm, you're not getting my point. No, no, no you're missing I, it. I am. No, I am. No, you can't you, blow a smoke no, and no, fucking see us go. No, you, you're just including modern basketball. What I'm saying is, if you include people like Wilt, who played before there was a three point line, who played before there were even block shots. Yeah, that's okay. Like that, the, the the basketball that was played in the 60s and 70s is very much different, including the rule set of of modern basketball. When the the age of LeBron and Jordan are much closer in terms of the the, the rule set, like yes, the rules are much more consistent from Jordan to LeBron, but the meta has still evolved a lot in terms of like. When Jordan reigned in the mid 90s, and when LeBron's peak in terms of the mid um, you know, 2010s and his time on the the Heat, uh, you know, and then going to to Cleveland, basketball still did change a lot from that. And now, nowadays, the meta of the NBA is a hugely different from back then, with the three pointers and the corner shot, in terms of you know what Steph Curry and the Warriors have done. So, to me, basketball has changed. I think it's like a good example. You can make it about all of Counter Strike. I know the games have changed. Obviously, one point six to tough. Source to Go are vastly different games. I I totally get that, but it's still Counter Strike at the end of the day. And if you want to have fun with it, you talk about the goat of everything, and you talk about all of the games. And well, that's why I think, to me, right now, right now, one, two, and three is Forest, Get Right, and Simple. I do have. Forest and get right above. Well, I'm not totally sure about two and three. I have Forest as number one. I do. I have Forest as number one. And then I think get right and simple. I think simple can go above get right, but it is very close. I think get right and Forest is also very close, but Forest had a slightly higher 1.6 peak than get right, which is why I make him. The GOAT. If Simple got more major championships in CSGO, then I think he would have a, to me, a closer time to Forrest in terms of overtaking Forrest. But because Simple did not win as many majors as, let's say, if Simple had the amount of majors that Device got, I think he would be ahead of Forrest in terms of the all-time GOAT conversation. Outside of 1.6, how many majors did the two people you listed have? Well, there were no majors in 1.6. So right. So how many? So you keep bringing up majors when you knock on wait, simple, wait, wait. but total championships. Wait, wait, wait. wait. The, th- the thing is, like, we're also comparing right now, like, Forrest and Get Right, when the, the amount of people that played back then and the, the size of the tournaments and how many people no, could, like, actually make too. a career. In them. All of that counts. All of that counts. Same thing as, like, the NBA. S- the, the, the level of competition in the NBA is so much better now than it was in the 70s, like, obviously. You know what I mean? Like the skill level and the amount of teams that are playing, all of that is so much. That's why modern 
sports athletes always get the benefit of the doubt in the guilt conversation than than old players most of the time. There's recency bias. There's competitive level of competition is higher. The leagues are bigger. It's harder to win. There's more stats now. There's a lot of reasons why modern players are always, you know, usually named in the GOAT type of thing. I feel like them being better then versus Simple being better now, I feel like Simple overshadows that. I can I can attest to like the longevity, the the fact that they were able to be so good for so long in 1.6, come to CSGO and fucking dominate the first few years especially, um, was very impressive. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it was a completely different game and being good at early day CSGO and, you know, 1.6 compared to late stage CSGO and where CS2 is right now is completely fucking different. Yeah, it's it's why it's hard for me to have the discussion because I just I just feel like every when you're comparing, I can't compare them fairly at all. Like the benefits I'm giving one player and what I'm valuing is completely different. I'm not like universally va valuing the players exactly the same way. It's like getting prioritized. And I, and I don't just mean like uh, like their style or something. I just mean like quite literally it just feels impossible to compare. You know, it's impossible to compare Forrest and Get Right's get career to Simple 1 because we don't know Simple where he's at, what he's even going to do. Two, the longevity aspect, which is what makes Forrest and Get Right so impressive. We can't really apply to Simple. Uh, so you're like one thing that you're giving two players the benefit of that you put above them, you can't really apply it to him himself, which is kind of like, okay, then if we're talking about talent, I mean, I think simple wins that discussion. And I think when you, you know, you kept mentioning majors, they're tied, they're all tied. They don't have, you didn't, they don't have more than him. Um, they won more initially, but then you kind of go back into this conversation at the yeah, start of CSGO. That hurt Simple. Simple should have more majors. Yeah, but there's a lot of nuance to that discussion as well. And there, you know, it was Simple and Friends for a very long time. A very long time. And when it stopped being Simple and Friends, it was a little bit better, and that's where the expectations came. And no, he eventually did get his. So, it, it, I don't know. It's It's a tricky one. I think Simple would still I mean, be whole... my goat. I think simple would still be my goat above Forrest and Get Right, but that's because you're talking to somebody that doesn't have real perspective to the longevity of their careers. I know how dominant Get Right was, specifically Get Right, at the start of CSGO. I'm well aware of that. I watched that, and I know Forrest, and Forrest was, Forrest, his consistency in Go and for yeah. his longevity was what was so impressive. Important. But everything before that is so hard for me to value in this discussion. So it's, I, for me, I'd just be making some shit up if I if I go further down the rabbit hole. I'd just be making shit up. So I think simple for me has to be the number one in that in that discussion. I mean, a lot of it for me is too. I watched Forrest and Get Right win those one point six championships in front of me. Like watching their time in Fnatic and watching their time in SK was incredible. Like those two dominated. They those were the two players of really for me it was. They were the players of 1.6. They were such incredible teammates together. They won so many international championships. And then the run that they went on with NIP to start the game, and obviously early CSGO competition is nowhere near the level of competition that CSGO was at the end of the life cycle of the game or even in CS2 now. But because they were able to go on such a dominant run at the start, combined with their legacy of wins and consistency in 1.6. And just as you say, I am not a uh, I'm not a Jordan guy over, over Bron, a LeBron guy, but watching LeBron at 40 years old still be the best player right now on Team USA means a lot. And although Forrest does not have a team currently, his longevity as a professional player absolutely is like embedded in terms of where he is ranked. He definitely gets points for me in terms of why he's number one because of his longevity. And as of now, yeah, I think simple is hurt a little bit. I also think it doesn't help simple that Navi is winning. Navi is winning. If oh, Navi no, I... was not winning without him, I think this would be a much different conversation, but them winning the major winning at EWC almost winning blast really makes simple look a little bit expendable no it almost feels like wonderful of having a better time integrating into the team 
all together. It's almost like, well, should we even bring back Simple? I mean, that's an absurd question, right? Like, if Simple wants to play, you would think Simple automatically has a spot back on the team. I don't think he does. But are who, we at the wait, point where, who, like, maybe not? Who are the next best after, like, Get Right and, and Forest I have and, like, 1.6 in and early CSGO? Oh, uh, 1.6? 1. 6. Um, 1. 1.6 in early CSGO, because you're, you're bringing up, like, them. Oh, it'd be, for, like, Neo. Uh, Neo, Neo 1. and 1.6. 1. Like Neo, and, Neo and Markalov. Neo, Markalov, uh, and um, um, the Danes. Uh, Zodic and shit? Yeah, Zonic. Yes. And Kerrigan? Uh, no. No, not Zonic, Kerrigan. Zonic, yes. Think. Zonic, yes. I would. I had. Mar I have Markalov and Neo as after. I have Markalov before Neo. Yeah, because what's like, get right? Markalov, Neo, and then I would be out of touch. But wasn't the main debate in one point six mostly between Forrest and Neo most of the time? I could be wrong, he, but I feel like that was like it was always between those two, yes. at least from my limited yeah. understanding. Maybe, maybe Trace. Maybe I think Trace would be up there too. Like the, the Danes at the very end became. The Danes at the end end of one point six should have showcased what they were going to be like at the uh, kind of strike coming forward. That's really when the Danish teams found their footing. It's tr Trace and that MTW squad. So when when we compare kind of like simple uh, Get Right and Forest to kind of their peers at the time versus Simple, you know, in contention with Zaiwu and Nico and Dupree and Majisk and whoever the fuck else is on Device and all these people that are on that list. And Cold Zera and his prime and Fallen in his prime and all those those people. What's kind of like more impressive, I guess, in, in terms of just individual skill, being able to take your team to whatever uh, limits? I think all of those things rights. are like every, everything is included for for me when I think about this. Like how many title, how many title, how many rings you got is definitely important. I feel like you're. So I feel like it was more better than simple. Well. <laughs> Valve, Valve implementing the major system is a big difference from 1.6 because that wasn't around back then. So we we in 1.6 we use like CPLs and WCGs and ESWCs to kind of and then IEMs also IEM Katowice back then too was a big world championship. We use those as like the the biggest major championships. Now in CS:GO there is a dedicated system it's much easier to track who's won the most majors and the later majors in csgo are more important than the nip majors right i can admit that the majors that get right and, and forest one were easier even though they went well they, they, were, they, they only won one, one. they only won one yes dramatic winner 23 wait no it no. was before that it was, it was no it was uh, later they lost the first one to fanatic and then they oh, true. They lost the first one to Fnatic, and they then lost, they lost twice. And then I, I think they lost, they lost to the Frenchies. And then they won. I think it. I think it was Katowice at a VP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I think right. Cologne. I think it was. They Cologne. might have won Cologne. Yeah, because I remember I was like, it was I was. I think I was on the cast for the finals of that thing. <laughs> you were there. Really, like, the, the the biggest issue for I think it was there. <laughs> for the the biggest problem for Simple and for Nico is their lack of major championships. Like they both of them at, at each well, Nico time. Well, none. The, the, <laughs> so, I know each of them at one time, especially Simple, were definitively the best player in the world, and they could not drag their teams over the line for a variety of reasons. Whether it's no help or self performance when it comes to like Nico's side, I would say in terms of not being able to win the major championships. And that is where Device really excels because of the dominance of Astralis and that team and him being the best player on that team. That is why it's so close in Go for me, even though Simple is definitely the undisputed GOAT. Um, but because of the lack of titles, you know, Device gets uh, kicked up there, I think, a good amount. Using team success to value the individual level is is a is a hard one for me no, to get you behind. Have to do both. You have to do both. You can't. I know, but I don't weigh more. The and then your then your team doesn't win the championship. Oh, I know. No, no, way. I know. There's you there's be the bus driver and the man. If you do not bring your team, no, to absolutely. But I'm just saying, like, I think there's give and take, and I think I value the team aspects less when you're having this conversation. Not that I don't value it at all, or that you don't need a championship, or that you can't 
like have it held against you. But when I'm thinking of like best player, I'm thinking of best player. I'm not thinking of like, well, what act be the best player if your team doesn't win? You can doesn't matter. You can. I've watched Nico do it a lot. Uh, Nico specifically, you mentioned his individual level. What you uh, maybe forgot, or a lot of people forgot, is Nico six months going into that major was maybe the highest rifle ceiling we've ever seen in Counter Strike history. And he literally missed one shot, and that's all people remember. But literally, he dragged his team kicking and screaming into that fucking major final and was one shot yeah. away from winning the game and was actually maybe the most dominant individual player I've ever seen. Yes. And so it was maybe the most dominant individual level I've ever seen in Counter-Strike. I know people think like, Don no, he did it for six months and he did it with a worse team and he, it was way more impressive. So yeah, like I would put Nico higher, even though he doesn't have a major because I value shit like that because I watched it and I know it actually happened. Also, that's why I can't speak to some of the older like accolades and shit like that. So another point is like, okay, so are you, would you also rate an IGL? Um, if they're winning, they're good IGL, and if they're losing, they're bad IGL? Ooh. Does it not matter like who, who's on their team? Like if I'm, if I'm IGL of a team and I've got like three fucking insane players that could literally just 1v5 and I've got three of them, does that make me a better IGL than someone that's playing with four people that are playing blindfolded and with no hands? I think Even IGLs I are like the worst goals. to try to fucking look at from the outside looking in, but it's a valid <laughs> right? point. Like you don't know. But it, yeah, we're, yeah. It's like we're we're trying to compare like uh, these these players and say like, oh, uh, this player is better because he's won more tournaments. It's like, yeah, but like he might have also been on a better team. No, that, like, that, that, that's, what, that's what makes it fun. Like all that stuff is really important. Um, how much help? the GM got it impacts how your legacy is a player. If your owner didn't get you the best teammates, then they screwed you over. Um, but you have to, I mean, you can acknowledge that, that the GM and the owner did not get you the teammates that you needed to put you in yeah. the best position to win. So then yeah, you'd say that player is worse. So look past that. Can yeah, exactly. That's what I'm that saying. It's like, like, you're kind of glossing they, over it They're Yeah. Their GM kind of cucked them a little bit. Right. Like, so that's, that's, it's very important. Like was simple really hurting his legacy? Cause he's got one major when he played the first half of it with flamey, who's playing grand theft auto, uh, he to warm up before he, Zeus. he played with Zeus. Like, yeah, no, exactly. Like, and then funny enough, Zeus went the major cause of the coach yeah. changes, but yeah, yeah. that's just too funny. But yeah, I, I, I just don't value it as highly as you do, I think. And that's because like, kind of what josh is saying there's so many intangibles when it comes to the team aspect where you start bringing them into the conversation it's not that they're not important it's that context matters and if you're going to recognize that context which you should yeah i still think undeniably simple can't actually really be touched all that much like you could maybe say towards the end when navi had that roster could they have won a little bit more yeah but they did get a grand slam don't forget that and they got they a major mm -hmm. so true but there's always an asterisk with the Grand Slam, but that's not their fault. That was COVID. That's not, they, they can't do anything about that. Right. And also, who's to say they don't win a major when we're missing them during the time that Navi's the strongest? So this is where context really comes into play there. Like when it comes to like what, if you're bringing up simples like achievements, there's a lot of circumstances that outside of his control, you know, I just feel like, Aren't yeah that you can't hold them against them. You just can't. I mean that's what that's what makes to me as a big sports guy. I love the goat thing. It's it, it's absurd. I know the goat, <laughs> goat discussion fucker. is absurd <laughs> because you're arguing make over mess. many different eras. You have to argue team success versus player success. You have to look into account the stats, the changing of the landscape, the different the competitive integrity. But that's what makes it fun. All right, we're never going to come to a conclusion. No, I know. But that's I just like, fanfic on you your know? PC. Did you write a fanfic? You probably did. Not, not yet. Maybe he for might. you, baby. Oh, my God. All right. Is that why you want to get it right on this podcast? So you can fucking, like, go back to his fanfic that he wrote later on? <laughs> probably. You know? By the way, Chris, if you're listening, you, you can see with this debate who really has your back here. Okay? He knows Who's where I stand. really your friend. Yeah. He knows right. I'm a shitty source player. He's, he flames me all the time. This man 
literally stays with me and gives me shit. It's crazy. Oh, no. So he knows. He knows I don't know shit about shit about 1.6. I Listen, I knew it was between Leo and Forrest, and I feel like. Chris. Okay, I, I, I get you. <laughs> I was there. Uh, uh, all right. I'm going to wrap your ass up because we've been yapping yep, way too good. long. Yeah, yeah, that was good. It was fun. I appreciate you being on, Josh. That was fun. Hopefully, how many kills did yeah. you get in the DM? Don't uh, lie. I don't know. I I got out after 300, but I also did a session before that as well, and I switched between the AK and the Scout and the Deeg, so I don't you know. You hear this? You hear this? North American orgs? This guy's literally <laughs> mid-podcast. He's he's dropped like 600 kills. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Get, get right on the Flomcast right now. I literally hit up Chris uh, before we even spoke to Josh. He was our backup plan. Josh was the... <laughs> We got, but Chris, uh, Chris was a busy boy. So that's what happened. <clears throat> He's very, very busy, busy man. I'm a, I'm a busy boy. I'm I know. That's why actually you got to, you know, we, you're going to be traveling a lot. You're busy, 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 but I'm going to head the fuck out. Cause no, next time we see steel, he'll be on a, a pro team for a CS. <laughs> he will be, he'll be. He's going to bring in maybe, a new org. He's going to bring, no, no, he's bringing maybe back a hundred thieves, hundred thieves, steel. 100 Thieves CS? Yeah. I mean, yep. Nadeshot kind of owes you at this point. I feel like you should try to cash out. Yeah, at least it owes me an ice cream or like a Froyo or something. <laughs> a Froyo. <laughs> All right. I'm going to head on out, though. It was nice, guys. This is good. This is good. It was perfectly scuffed just the way I wanted it. Just how I like it. Just scuffed enough? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fun this way. When you do it live, doing it with all the edit and make it look pretty, it, we'll probably do that at some point, but this is way more fun. All right. Bill O'Reilly? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'll talk to you guys later. I got a wife to go hang out with. You guys are lame.